appeal hearing for September 28th is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law, including the provisions of an act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency that was signed by Governor Baker on June 16, 2021. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings that it adopted during the COVID-19 pandemic until April 1, 2022. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the WebEx event platform. This hearing is also being live streamed. In order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. As with our in-person meetings, comments and support will be followed by comments and opposition. The order of comments is as follows, elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting will be limited by the chair as time constraints require. For that reason, those individuals who live closest to the project, uh, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project, that is, those individuals who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise your hand icon in the application via the WebEx platform. To raise your hand, click the participant information icon. From there, find your name and on the lower right hand side, you should see a hand raising icon. Click the icon and your hand will be virtually raised. Click it again and your hand should go down. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star three to raise your hand. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first and then can provide their comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Fortune reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant address is called or the meeting host will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. These instructions may be repeated throughout the hearing. I'm going to start with a roll call of attendees. My name is Mark Ehrlich. I am acting chair sitting in for regular chair Christina Rajo. Mr. Fortune. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, uh, Ms. Dong. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Morning, Mr. Ruggiero. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Mr. Kindell. Chair. Good morning, Ms. Lowe. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Ms. Braza. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, and Mr. Hampton uh, from the BPDA, are you there? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Mr. Fortune will now begin with the call of the list. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The first order of business is the extension calling BOA 905-438-64 Nelson Street. Mr. Chair, this is due to expire on October 11th of 2021. If we do grant this, it'll be their first extension. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is Kevin Cloutier from the Cloutier Law Firm located at 1990 Center Street in West Roxbury, representing the owner uh, who is also the developer of this property. Um, and why are you seeking an extension? We're seeking an extension because the COVID pandemic has just adjusted my client's timeline on not just this project, but a number of other projects he was working on both in and outside of Boston. Uh, so that timeline's just been adjusted. Otherwise, we're prepared to go forward and continue to work, keep working with ISD uh, over the course of the next year if the board extends us that relief uh, to get this project up and running. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I have a motion, please? A motion for a one-year extension. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All, all opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. On the next case, calling BOA 959 349 2005 Dorchester Avenue. Mr. Chair, this is due to expire also October 11th of 2021. This will be their first extension to be granted today. Name and address for the record, please. 
uh, Franci um, 2005 Dorchester Ave, Francine Times. Um, Ms. Times, could you tell us why you're seeking an extension? Uh, I, I'm seeking an extension only because, um, you know, what's going on in the world with the COVID and it, it, it kind of, you know, halted everything and I'd like to start my project next June. Okay, you're pretty confident that you can get it done in the next year, get it started? Yes, definitely. Okay, all right, can I have a motion, please? Uh, motion, motion for a one-year extension. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Is this, the, so th does this motion, I mean, does the extension go from, from today to October? I mean, how does the, how does the time frame work from? You, you, uh, have, you, you have a year from today. Okay, all right, so when I get started in June, and let's say I can still go on as long as I get yeah, started? The, the, you have to get started before, the, uh, before it expires, that's all. Okay, all right, then I plan on starting in June. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Good luck. Calling the next case, the board final lobbyer, calling DOA 927 849 48 to 62 Brookline Avenue. Name and address for the record, please. Sorry, Dennis is on the phone. Give me one second. Okay, Dennis, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the applicant with me this morning is Ross Bradshaw, the principal of New Dia LLC, which was granted uh, relief uh, with a decision of April 17th, 2021, uh, which had a proviso to this petitioner only. Uh, the request is Mr. Bradshaw would like to change the name of the entity, no other changes from New Dia LLC to New Dia Fenway LLC to particularize the, the location of this site. Uh, there are no other changes uh, affected by this, no changes to the proposal in any respect other than that simple name change. Uh, this has been approved by the Boston Cannabis Board. Uh, and we wanted to make certain that we weren't uh, running afoul of the proviso on the decision. Okay, so this is this has been approved by the Cannabis Board and the new name has been registered? Yes, sir. Okay, that is, uh, I would say, de minimis. Uh, can I have a motion, please? Motion for approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, board final arbiter, calling DOA 1020164, 472 West Broadway. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Chairman, members of the board. My name is George Moranti. I'm an attorney with the business address at 350 West Broadway in South Boston. Chairman, members, this uh, my client is Eastway Development, Charles McCarthy and Patrick McDevitt. On October 27th of 2020, the board approved this application. Part of the application uh, is for uh, uh, parking for the project in a, an automated parking system. The board approved, approved plans depicting 11 garage parking spaces. The assumption was that the parking system, which has 12 sleds, would require one to be open at all times, therefore 11 parking spaces. As it turns out, uh, once the manufacturer's um, uh, specifications were analyzed, there needs to be two vacant sleds at all times in the system, which means that instead of 11 parking spaces, there would be 10 parking spaces. ISD asked that we present this to board final arbiter for board consideration and approval of the reduction by one parking space in the number of approved spaces. Okay, yeah, I recall, I recall this case. Uh, Ms. Ms. Barraza, have we seen the revised, are there revised uh, plans that have been uh, presented? Yes, Mr. Chair. I reviewed the plans and it seems very minor. Uh, then, uh, can I have a motion, please? Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion of approval. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. I'm going to call the 930 hearings. Are there any deferrals or withdrawals to 930? If you give me the address first, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Derek Small. Um, the address is 26 Elmore Street. And is it a case, Mr. Yes, Mr. yes, Mr. yes, Mr. 21 Mayfair Street. Thank you. For the record, calling DOA 1202 544 26 Elmore Street. There is a companion case, DOA 1202 547 21 
Mayfair Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Members of the Board, Attorney Derek Small with the business address of the Twin Thompson Road, Braintree, Mass. Um, we're here today seeking a deferral of these two cases as we are going to continue having conversations with the abutters with regard to the project. Um, and so you have those conversations haven't happened or the issues aren't resolved? They have. There's a couple of issues that still need to be resolved. Is that something, how soon do you think you can get that handled? Um, we will be talking to them, going to a meeting with them um, first week in October, so anytime after October 15th. Uh, okay. Can, can I have a motion, please? Motion for deferral. The rise is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, can we have a date, Mr. Fortune? We have a date of 11 9, November 9th at 1230. Thank you very much, have a good day. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 930 cases? Eric? Hearing none, I'll call the first case, calling DOA 122 1651, 1 Merrimack Street. There's no work to be performed. The applicant is seeking an extension of conditional use permit to provide 16 foot feet open air parking spaces on a part of the property. Relief was granted by the ZBA on, October, on August 13, 2019, with a proviso that stated relief would expire within two years. The violation of Article 6, Section 4, other protectional conditions. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Jonathan Burke with the business address to 55 Traveler Street in Boston. Uh, as was read before, we're just seeking an extension um, of previously issued variance for conditional use for open air parking for a fee. There are uh, 12 EV spaces on the edges, uh, bike parking, um, and then uh, four valet parking spaces in the interior of the lot. Will there be uh, any changes in the number of spaces? No changes in the number of spaces, no changes in anything. We've worked closely with uh, West End Civic Association to deal with some issues around delivery scheduling for the businesses there. But other than that, there's no changes to the space. Okay, well, um, uh, you had a two year uh, um, uh, expiration uh, last time. Uh, we often give three. I'm wondering whether, did I, I'm trying to remember the specifics of the case. Did we ask for additional screening and buffering? There was no, there were no changes asked for last time either. Um, and we, we asked for three years and I'm not sure why we ended up with two, but. Okay, well, I assume if we didn't give you the full three, that's because we were asking for something, but I, but I don't, I don't actually recall. I, I looked in Google yeah, Maps I, and there, there is very limited uh, screening and buffering on the site. I, I thought that that's what we asked for last time. Yeah. I, 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 that's what I recall. I think you're right, Mr. Ruggiero. Uh, I, you know, again, I looked on Google Maps, there's like one tree in a little cage and then another couple of trees in a little cage and that's about it. Um, there, uh, Mr. Burke, you, uh, the owner has made no commitment to any additional screening and buffering? As I recall from two years ago, we weren't asked to, to make any screening and buffering and the, the Western Civic Association actually just worked with us for the last few months to, to develop a, a good neighbor agreement, which didn't request anything on the site either. Hmm. Okay, uh, Ms. Verosman, how, uh, how are the plans? Mr. Chair, the drawings are adequate. Is there anyone here to speak on, uh, on behalf of the proponent? Mr. Chair and members of the board, my name is John Romano from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, I am the North and West End Waterfront Liaison. At this time, they're going to go on record in support of this project as the applicant has worked with the civic organizations and the abutters in the area uh, to be able to make sure that the project is as best as it possibly can be. From your perspective, was there any discussion uh, either with the Mayor's uh, Office of Neighborhood Services or the Civic Association for additional screening and buffering? Uh, to my knowledge, there was not. They were happy with the project as is, um, but I'm sure that they would, uh, if the board had worked with that, would work with the applicant in whatever way necessary. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Good morning, uh, Miss. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Ana Calderon from Councillor Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support based on feedback from neighbors and the West End Civic Association who inform us they are not opposed to the proposal. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Secretary, we do have a letter from the West End uh, in, in not opposed to the project. 
but I, I believe you're right. I know, I know uh, Kim is always crucial on these things with screening and buffer, and I find it hard to believe that we didn't do anything to this one. And Mr. Chair, I have no raised hands. Thank you. All right, can I have a motion, please? Uh, Mr. I'll, make, oh. I'll make a motion for a two year extension with BPDA design review for screening and buffering, which I believe it was impossible not to be included last time. So please do that moving forward. I'll second that motion. Secretary. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion passes. Please, uh, Mr. Burke, please communicate that to your uh, uh, to the owner. Sure. Thank you. Calling the next two cases. Calling DOA one two three eight zero five two one forty five Worcester Street. There is containing a case. DOA one two three eight zero three nine one forty five Worcester Street. This is to construct new, new construct two new cantilever decks, new sliding door system on the garden level, new pavement for parking and rear and roof deck. The violation of Article 32, Section 4, this is in the G-Card, topic ability, any paving or other surface of the lot area. Article 64, Section 9, townhouse, row house, extension is the rear yard, decks above the first story. And then for 145, the building code, the 9th edition, 780 CMR, 1011 stairways, 1011.2.2, roof access, access to roof above the fourth story shall be provided through a penthouse. Payment address for the record, please. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston, attorney for the applicant. Um, shall we do the building code item first, Mr. Chair? Yes, that's the, that's the usual route. The building code item relates to the access to the roof deck. The proposed access is by hatch, and the building code refusal letter states that access to a roof above the fourth story shall be provided through a penthouse. Um, typically, <clears throat> the solution is hatch access in the south end, which is consistent with Article 64, Section 34, which requires hatch access to roof decks in the south end, and also hatch access is consistent with the South End Landmark Commission guidelines um, for roof lines. So the proposal here, shown on the last slide of this um, particular presentation, the very last slide, please, shows access to the roof deck shall be through a hatch. Uh, Mr. Lacasse, Lica it's also consistent with ZBA policy. And consistent with ZBA <laughs> policy, yes, indeed. <laughs> All right, Ms. Barraza, is, is the hatch shown on the drawings that you have? Mr. Chair, yes, they are. Okay, then can I have a motion just on the building code if matter? Mr. Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of relief of the building code to allow for the roof hatch. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? <laughs> okay, Mr. Lucas, let's go to the, the main ca the case. Perfect. Thank you so much. On the main case, which is an amendment to an existing long form permit for the renovation of this three unit building, the proposal is to construct two new cantilever decks at the second and third floor which requires a conditional use permit. And the other item is um, groundwater conservation overlay district applicability. And we have submitted to the record the Boston Water and Sewer Commission Article 32 compliance letter and the no harm letter from our engineer. Okay, well, let's deal with GCOD first. Is Mr. Simonelli uh, here in attendance? I believe he's out this week, Mr. Chair, um, but I did say yeah, he's not on Mr. Pia, sorry, Mr. Lacasse. Uh, we do have the Boston Modern School letter. Okay, then can I have a, a motion on, just on the GCOT? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed. Okay, so um, with respect to the cantilever decks, how are they supported, Mr. Lacasse? Um, those are projecting six feet from the rear of the structure and are supported by cantilever steel brackets. Okay. and otherwise consistent with the BPDA design review guidelines as well as the South End Landmark Commission guidelines for balconies. They're shown here on the right-hand side of the screen at the second and third floor um, of the rear. And has, it, has this proposal already gone through Landmarks? Um, landmarks does not exercise jurisdiction 
below the roof cornice line um, unless the rear faces a public street or avenue and okay. this does not so landmarks does not um, exercise jurisdiction over the rear and typically this board um, assigns BPDA design review for such yeah. balconies. Yeah. Okay, Ms. Ms. Maraza, how are the uh, drawings? The drawings are adequate, Mr. Chair. Okay, is there anyone here to speak on behalf of the proponent? Yes, um, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the board. I'm Kim Cusilli with Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office would like to go on record in support of this proposal. Thank you. Anybody else? Which I have no raised hands. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion then? Mr. Chair, I just would like to make a comment on uh, before putting forth the motion. Uh, sure. Looking at the Google Earth, I see that a lot of the parking spaces has crushed stone, and I would just like to encourage the applicant to use a more permeable uh, material for parking versus brick. I like with that. I like to put a motion of approval with BPDA design review. Do you want to uh, have the design review specifically refer to the uh, the material on the on the driveway? I'm not, yes, just to review that. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion passes. Thank you so much. Calling the next case, calling BOA 123-7273-248 Gold Street. This is to expand the existing Unit 1 into the basement and full third floor addition to Unit 2. Add a roof deck to Unit 2 only. The violation of Article 68, Section 29, Roof Structure Restrictions, Article 68, Section 33, off street parking is insufficient. Article, uh, Article 68, Section 8, Excessive FAR. Article 68, Section 8, insufficient side yard is sufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Attorney Nick Zazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, 28 State Street, Suite 802 in Boston. Uh, with me today, uh, the property owner and developer, Bobby Cherisimides. And uh, on the architectural side, from Rubenoff Architects, I have Derek and Anat. Uh, Mr. Chair, 248 Gold Street uh, is located off F Street between West 4th and West 5th. You can see the existing street view there in front of you now in an aerial view. Um, um, it's an existing two-family dwelling on the site, uh, assessed and zoned as such. It's about 1,300 square feet of living space. And Bobby recently purchased the property uh, a little less than a year ago, and he's been living there, and he's identified some upgrades and expansion opportunities uh, at the site. So what's being proposed, Mr. Chair, members of the board, is to expand, the, again, it's, an, it's a two-unit building, and what he's looking to do is expand the existing first floor unit into some underutilized and existing lower level space uh, that walks out to the rear of the property because of the grade change at the site. And he's also looking to add a full third floor addition to the second floor unit, um, which would make it uh, a two-story unit as well, and that would fill in the quote uh, unquote kind of missing tooth um, as you could see from uh, previously was up was the street view um, there are three-story buildings on both sides of this property so he's looking to add the third story to uh, kind of move up to that roof line and importantly that does still remain zoning compliant with the building height requirement it'd be only about 36 feet and uh, the height requirements 40 feet he's also looking to gut and reconfigure the entire interior layout within the building footprint uh, again, would remain as a two-family, sprinkler the building, uh, upgrading life safety throughout. It's an older building, so that would uh, be a benefit uh, to the, the property as well and to the neighborhood. Uh, and I also wanted to clarify, Mr. Chair, that um, after discussions with um, some of the neighbors and uh, District City Council at Flynn's office, we are no longer proposing a roof deck as part of this project. Um, we understand that roof decks are uh, obviously a hot-button issue in uh, South Boston, and um, we, we, you know, tried to design something that would be appropriate. But after discussion um, with with that office and with neighbors, that's going to be removed from the specific application. Um, if it if it suits the board, we we'd appreciate being able to remove that during BPDA design review. Um, it would not be shown on this building permit application. 
uh, it would not be shown, shown on the set of plans that would be submitted to ISD, um, and it wouldn't cause, removing it would not cause any, any other zoning issues. So um, we'd just like to request that if possible. And finally, Mr. Chair, I know that um, yeah, you know, it, um, the, the unit sizes are of importance to the board and, and kind of the configuration. So I just wanted to highlight that right now, the first floor unit is a one bed, one bath at only 510 square feet. And the second floor unit uh, where Bobby's living right now is a two bed, two bath at only 510 square feet. So these are very small units. And by uh, proposing this project, the, the first unit would become a two bed, two and a half bath at about a thousand square feet. And the second unit would remain a two bed, but it would increase to about a thousand square feet as well. So we'd really be improving uh, the available living space uh, at the property. Um, happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, I could go through the specific zoning release as well if, if you see fit, but they are included our, in our presentation at uh, slide number 12. Thank you. Okay, um, I have a few questions. Uh, so he, may, he has two beds and two baths in 510 square feet? That's what's existing. That's when we went in, and, and that's what's there now, Mr. Chair. So when he bought the property, again, this building was built, I think, uh, when we looked into the building jacket, this building was originally built in 19, uh, 1890. Um, so the units were a lot smaller back then. And when he purchased it, that's what he, that's when, that's when uh, he got into the building, realized that you know those obviously are, are very small units. So that's what's existing now. Um, and he's looking to double the size of the living space by basically making these both into duplex units. Okay, no, I, yeah, I mean, that's a lot to cram into a relatively small space. So, um, so yeah. let, me ask, let me ask a few questions. If we, uh, if we do approve this, we will uh, have a proviso, there's no roof deck. So that's, uh, that's one item. Um, what is the height floor to ceiling of the basement, of the, uh, the proposed basement space? Yes, sir, so if you go to, if, um, I don't know who's, who's um, running the show, but if you go to slide 12, I'm sorry, slide 10 of our presentation, we actually, understanding that's a common question, um, we do provide a building section and basement detail. Um, and uh, when we get to that, I don't know which, which slide this is, but it's slide just, 10. Just give me the yeah. answer. What's the oh, yeah, yeah, no, I just wanted you to visualize it. So it's existing ceiling height is seven feet, three inches, and we're proposing it to be eight feet, four inches We'd, we'd be looking to lower the floor by about 12 inches to gain the extra headroom. And if you see, you can also see on that slide that there is an existing walkout. It's a full sliding door. And um, so there is, you know, adequate light air and, and uh, so by, by going down 12 inches, we add that. Hang on, this is a little short. Sure. By dropping the, the existing walkout, I assume, is at, at, uh, at at grade at the floor the floor level by dropping yes, the floor, by dropping the floor 12 inches you'll have to step up to get to to a walkout is that correct uh, i believe so but I'll, I'll ask derek or not somebody from the architectural side to make sure i don't misspeak yeah thanks thanks nick uh good morning to uh mr chairman of the board there um you, you're gonna have a couple of steps up to the, the, the sliding door there you can see on the left and then there'll be a patio that's slightly recessed into the grade and there'll be one more step up to the yard, so you you have a, a few, basically three risers. Okay, so and so and the, the uh, topography of the site slopes uh, down to the back. What is the uh, floor to uh, the floor the newly proposed floor to grade height in the front, and what will it be in the back? The uh, the difference between the newly proposed floor in the back is uh, two feet. And in the front, it's, um, it's about uh, five foot nine or so. Mm. And then front, the front part has kitchen. So we just, we're gonna have, the, the existing windows will become, in the front, will become kitchen windows. So you can see in the uh, plan diagram on the left there, we're gonna have a really nice, big, full size, triple sliding door. You'll get, you're going to get a lot of natural light into that living area there. Okay, so the so the the, the unit uh, the basement part of this the, the unit will consist of a kitchen and living room. Bedrooms will be upstairs. That's correct. Yes, sir. Yeah, we made we did that on purpose, uh, okay. Mr. Chair, to make sure of that. Yep. You know, we ask those questions. Uh, exactly. Uh, all right, uh, Ms. Barraza, how are the plans? Mr. Chair, the plans are adequate. 
and you, you're comfortable with the uh, uh, all the arrangements of the grade and the egress and the access and et cetera? I'm very comfortable because there's no bedroom units in the basement and you have direct access to the exterior. So it's, there's not really a life safety concern. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? Uh, is there anyone here to speak on behalf of the proponent? I'm Mr. Chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I'd like to go record in support, um, again, based on the fact that the applicant worked with the neighbors. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flint's office. The councillor would like to own record in support due to the proponent's willingness to work on a good faith compromise and to remove the roof deck from the proposal, which are always opposed by the local civil group and neighbor, neighbors from the City Side Neighborhood Association. Councillor Flint's support is based this proposal remaining a two family and the removal of the roof deck, which will help address concerns about the noise from late parties and quality of life issues. We respectfully request that the proponent continue to work with neighbors on any quality of life issues during the construction phase as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I do have one raised hand. Dave, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Sure. Uh, Dave Nado, 259 Gold Street. And I reviewed the drawings of the uh, project, and I believe that uh, relative to the local area, any projects that are going to uh, renovate, or revitalize, and add value um, for uh, an ownership uh, to, you know, I, I guess have a vested interest in the neighborhood uh, for a, you know, good period of time is something that I would be supportive of. I think it, you know, blends in with the character of the surrounding um, uh, homes and uh, therefore go on record as supporting the project as it's presented. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I have no additional reasons. Mr. Chair, Secretary Dale, um, we did have one letter of opposition, but it sounds like Mr. Sutulis took care of it. It was opposed to the roof deck. Okay, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, can I have a motion, please? Uh, so I, Mr. Oh, sorry, I have, some, I, I have a question as well. Okay. I, uh, just, just a question, too. Should we, can we make a motion to deny the relief for a roof deck and approve the rest of the relief requested? Well, I think what we can do is get, a, if we're going to approve, we should get a motion for approval with the proviso that there, that, that there be no roof. Okay. I'll let Hansi ask your question before. Yeah, so the, the other question I have is um, the building to the right that has a Mazar roof, did you receive support from that neighbor? Uh, we did not have any um, any communication from that neighbor, Mr. Barraza, uh, Ms. Barraza. We did have an abutter meeting. Um, I believe a tenant of that building showed up at the abutter meeting and asked some questions. But okay, I just um, have a concern with the third floor massing and the way that it abuts the Mansour roof profile. Um, the drawings did not show that relationship. So I would like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA with two proviso that with BPDA design review to remove the roof deck and to also look at the front um, roof line of the Manzar from on the third story. So because from Google Earth, you can actually see that you have conflicts with the exist with the, your neighboring gutter. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Call Thank the next you. case. Call, call the next case, calling BOA 123 5197 104 to 104B, Jamaica Street. It's erected three story, three unit townhouse style dwelling. There will be off street parking located at the grade in the rear of the yard. The violation of Article 55, Section 40, Austin Parking and Loading. Article 55, Section 41, Traffic Visibility Across the Corner Lot. Article 55, Section 8, Three Family Townhouse Dwelling is Forbidden. Article 55, Section 9, The Lot Area is Insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, The Floor Area Ratio is Excessive. Article 55, Section 9, The Bill of Height Number of Stories is Excessive. 
Article 55, Section 9, use of open space is insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. And Article 55, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small, a business address at 51 Dobson Road, Branch, Mass. Um, with me today is the owner of the property, Ms. Rosa Williams, and the architect, uh, Mr. Chris Paradas. Mr. Chairman, today we are here seeking relief to demolish the existing uh, two-family dwelling and to erect three townhouse-style units on the property. Zoning subdistrict is a 2F5000. Our lot size is approximately 4,000 square feet. Um, the, the unit sizes, I'll, leave, I'll let the architect go over, but our zoning violations are as follows. Um, FAR, the required FAR is 0 0.6. We are proposing 0 0.9. Uh, building height is 35 feet, two and a half stories in this uh, zoning subdistrict. We are at 34 feet, three stories. So we still are under the number of feet required. Uh, with regard to the front yard setback, required setback is 15 feet. Uh, we are proposing five, which will also be a mobile setting setback in the front. And on the side yard, uh, the requirement is 10 feet, and we have approximately five. I'll turn it over to Chris Paravis to go over the plans and who is the architect for the project. Chris? Hey, everyone. Uh, again, Chris Paravis, uh, business address is 49 Appleton Street in Melrose, Mass. Um, as Derek said, what we're looking to do here is a uh, three unit um, townhouse style um, building. Um, the plan you're looking at right now shows from, from, from uh, left to right um, two. Uh, three bedroom units and the smallest unit on the right is a two bedroom unit. Um, the uh, essentially public spaces, kitchen, uh, dining room, living room spaces are all on the uh, first floor with uh, bedrooms uh, making up the, the bulk of the space on the uh, second and uh, third stories. Yep, that's the second floor there. If you can scroll down a little bit more, you can see the, uh, the third floor as well. Um, and if we can continue scrolling down, um, so look at the exterior elevations. Actually, right there, if we can stop at the um, uh, the, uh, the code summary there. Um, so that 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 uh, basically um, confirms some of the information that um, Derek is is uh, speaking to. Uh, we have um, roughly what is it, three thousand seven hundred and sixty-seven square feet of occupiable space within the building. Um, that doesn't include um, the unfinished uh, basement area. Uh, in the building. Uh, if you can continue panning down to the elevations. Thank you. So we're looking here at the uh, Jamaica Street um, or front elevation of the building from the left side to the right. Units are stepping down in size, uh, which also um, causes a reduction in the uh, roof height as you head to the corner of Jamaica Street. You can continue panning down. Um, Rear elevation. Uh, this is facing the uh, neighbors uh, that are also on uh, Jamaica Street. And if you can pan down still some more. Uh, originally, uh, we had a mansard style um, um, structure here, and uh, with the you know, working with the neighbors through the neighborhood hearing process, we've uh, changed it to a, a, a gable style so that the look from the street. Um, is, is a little bit more low slung compared to a mansard. Thank you. Okay. It's uh, it gave over dormers, though. Uh, correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you describe the parking? Do you have a plot plan that shows the parking there? Um, there should be one included, is there? Thank you. There's, there's uh, parking spaces, one for each unit, and I think that, that zone uh, requires one parking space for each. That's correct. Yep, okay. there we go. Okay, I'm just trying to say, okay, so the driveway is, um, okay. So uh, at the top of the page, you, you basically come in off the street and there are two spaces down towards the bottom of the lot and one um, towards the top adjacent to uh, um, um, Jamaica Street. Okay. Um, Can you... Can you please describe the open space? Um, yeah, open space would be essentially along the, um, the, the, the the bottom side of the page, or south on 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 the um, on the plot. So it, it's it's 
actually the site plan um, is not correct. It says 7.9. The, the neighbors and the neighborhood hearings asked for a reduction in the width of the units, which we gave them, and it reduces the um, each unit by six inches. And the side yard setback is actually um, 9.3 feet. Yep, on that side. Looks this point. Um, and you know, for, for all intent and purpose, you know, we're looking at an area there of, of, of what 300 square feet or so of of, um, of, of open space on the uh, south side of the lot. And, and but you're really will, describing, be, sorry, but you're really just describing almost a side yard. Co correct. Sliver of yep. green space. That's it's correct. Not, there's no open landscape space at the rear of the, of the townhouses. That, that's correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, how are the drawings, Mrs. Raza? Mr. Chair, the, Mr. Chair, the drawings are adequate. Okay. Any questions from the board? Is there anyone here to speak on Mr. behalf Chair, of Mr. Chair, sorry. Uh, Mr. D'Amico spoke on this. Just want to put his words in for the record, please. Yep. Uh, regarding 104-104B Jamaica Street, the violation concerning traffic visibility across the corner can be rectified by the installation of the proper signage by DPD. By DTD. Okay, that's a good idea. Work with that. Uh, anybody here to speak on behalf of the proponent? Hi, yes, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Tiffany Caballero here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, the applicant and their team went before the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council uh, Public Service Committee. And so um, we would just like to echo their support. It was voted to be approved. And so the record, the record would be for us to go on support. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good morning. Uh, Mr. Chair and members of the board, this is Peter Fabrio from City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office. Uh, the council would like to also go on record and support. Thank you. Mr. Chair, we have one letter of support. Well, Mr. Chair, we have no raised hands. Okay, can I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve with BPDA design review. Um, with the, with the focus on landscaping and, and improving the um, outdoor open space. Can we also, can we also include BTD uh, review for the signage? Yes. Yep. That as well. Thank you. All Sorry. those in favor? As, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I all oppose. Okay. And one opposed. That's uh, Ms. Barraza, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. The motion passes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Have a good day. Calling the next case, calling VOA 1193512, 41 Door Street. This is at a roof deck. Violation Article 50, Section 38, Design Review. Article 50, Section 29, Front Yard is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, Side Yard is insufficient. And Article 50, Section 29, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Zoning Board. My name is Mark Abuazi, owner of 41 Door Street. Um, the plans are being pulled up. So the proposed project here is to add a roof deck structure to the existing building. Um, we already have a existing staircase that leads up to the roof. Um, so the plan here would be to erect a 570 square foot roof deck at the top of the building. Uh, this, uh, this is a three unit um, building, correct? correct? So would this roof deck be exclusively for the use of the upper unit? Correct, for the third floor unit. Okay, and, and what? how is access to the roof deck achieved? There's a rear staircase and it has a pre-existing, as you can see on the top uh, left elevation plan right there, there is a um, existing staircase that leads up to the top of the roof. Okay, I can't quite tell from the drawing. Is there a head house there that, uh, or does the staircase just open up? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Ehrlich, there is, this, sorry, this is Eric Jackerson. There is a uh, existing head house at the rear of the building. It's an existing head house. How big is it? It's, it's uh, sorry, um, six foot ten wide by nine foot five long mm -hmm. and has that sloped roof that uh, kind of minimizes its, its appearance. Okay. Mr. Chair, it seems like the other two neighboring uh, townhouses, uh, 
triple deckers have existing head houses as well. So it's pretty. It seems like it's pretty common. Okay, and they have roof decks also. No, no roof deck, just existing head house. The head house, okay. Just for access to the roof. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this is pretty existing. So, all right. Uh, how how are the drawings, Mr. Barraza? Mr. Chair, the plans are adequate. Okay. Any questions from the board? anyone here to speak on behalf of the project Good morning chairman and members of the board this is Jason Gant from the mayor's office of neighborhood services I'd like to go on record in opposition to the project just highlighting the Highland Park neighborhood coalition's comments on the proposed project which is that they feel the roof deck size is too excessive for the neighborhood and want to keep it in line for what is currently already in the neighborhood thank you Wait, oh, before you get up, so they want they want a they want no roof deck or they want a reduced size roof deck. They want a reduced size roof deck. So the proposed plan originally was the 1,000 square foot, and after meeting with the coalition, they the applicant had reduced the size to the 570, and they still want a reduction. They believe that the adequately sized roof deck can be achieved without the need for the variance. And. Um, what is there is there a size they had in mind 200 square feet i believe and it's currently 570 570 is the proposed and 200 is what was is their preferred okay thank you no problem thanks for clarifying that all right anybody else want to testify either uh in favor or opposition Mr. Mr. Chair, Chair, Secretary Hamm, sorry. Um, no, we have that same we have that same letter from the Highland Park neighborhood. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Okay. Chair, and, yeah. and, and that letter makes it clear, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fortune, that, that they're not opposed to a roof deck, uh, uh, but they're opposed to the size. That, that's what I'm reading. Okay, thank you. Thanks. And Holly, uh, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Sure. This is Holly Shepard. Uh, um, 45 Hawthorne Street. I'm the secretary for the Neighborhood Coalition, and I just wanted to clarify that it was a unanimous vote by the neighborhood. Um, Mr. Uh, Abu Aziz met with us and stipulated that he would be selling the unit within a year, and therefore, um, be, one, because it was not um, you know, a homeowner who was looking to build a roof deck for their family, we couldn't know that these weren't going to be partying um you know college students on a roof deck in a very um unsafe environment with a thousand square foot or 500 square foot roof deck neighbors um pulled developers in the area who said they have not been approved for more than a 200 square roof deck in the neighborhood and we asked the architect to respond to us with what size roof deck could be done without variances but we did not receive a response therefore the neighborhood felt that a roof deck could be built within uh without needing variances thank you yeah. i have no additional raised hands thank you can i have a motion please mr chair i'd like to put for a motion of approval with a proviso to have bpda design review to reduce the size of the roof deck do you want to put a specific number on that or just leave it uh uh, you know, I'm hoping that the applicant can work with their neighbor. Okay. Uh, it just, yes. I just got a question. Go ahead. Because I'm just a little unclear. Is there is, is, a roof deck allowed and the only, the only problem is the size of the roof deck? Is that why they're coming up early? I'm just a little confused. Oh, I missed something. It, if I may, Mr. Chair, it's Jeff Hampton at the BPDA. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like the violations that are listed on the refusal letter uh, have to do with the building itself. Not, It's not in a restricted roof structure district like some parts of the city which require conditional use. I'm not sure if the building is non-conforming to the yard setbacks already and that anytime you put an addition on a building, those come back into play. Um, uh, I wouldn't want to have you base your decision or emotion on my assumption that the building is non conforming to the setbacks already, but just reading the way that the violations are listed, that does seem the, the logical explanation. 
Uh, that that makes that makes total sense since not, nothing in the proposal uh, triggers any of those uh, those, those, those 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 problems. Yeah. Just want to clarify. Okay. All right. Well, there, there is a motion. Uh, Ms. Raza made a motion uh, for approval with a proviso with DPDA design review with a proviso that the roof deck size be reduced. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, the motion passes. I would strongly urge the um, uh, the applicant to, to uh, take the comments very seriously and not simply make a token reduction, but make a reduction that would uh, and that would respect the wishes of the neighborhood. And I would ask that that uh, Mr. Hampton that that be the uh, uh, perspective of the DPDA. I will pass that information along. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. On the next case, calling BOA 121 1193, 137 Census Street. This is to remove and dispose of approximately 1,200 square feet of floor, install a 2 by 10 floor joist between existing joists, install a 3 quarter ply floor. The violation of Article 50, Section 29, the floor to air ratio is excessive, and Article 50, Section 29, the building has excessive in storage. Name and address for the record, please. Yes. Uh, 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 uh. I'm sorry, 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 so I'm getting an echo. Yeah, so my name is Mark Miller. I'm a... Uh, Are you on two computers, Mark? Um, I am. Sorry. Let me uh, see if I can shut off. Or mute one. Just, just shut off the audio on, on one of them. Nope, I we can't hear you now. Okay. Uh, is that any better? Yes. Yes. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm not quite sure what I'm looking No, you're still back. It's still an echo. Um, oh, you know what? Let me. Uh, Madam Ambassador, can you uh, mute one of his? Um, I see. One of, one of, he's on twice, but one is muted. Can you get out of the other one, Mark? Completely uh, shut down the other computer? Well, if the other one's muted now, we should be. Uh, Mr. Miller, go ahead. Just uh, say something so we can tell. Can you hear me now? No, it's still, echoing. still echoing. If you can close down one of the uh, uh, one of the ways that you entered, that would probably solve the problem. Okay, let me do something. Sorry, sorry. Is that, is that, no, no, no. Uh, why don't we do this, uh, Mr. Fortune, why don't we take the next case, Mr. Millick, if you could, uh, I'll try, I'll try, I'll try. we'll come back to you, um, and hopefully you can resolve this issue. Calling the next case, calling DOA 116-1636, 260 to 266A Bowden Street. This is a change of occupancy to restaurant 36A37, restaurant 36-37-38, office retail and art, in live and to live entertainment. Work to include a petition to create storage space and painting walls. The violation of Article 15, Section 15, Section 15, our live entertainment uses conditional needs. David address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Samantha Rivas, owner of Modern Party Art 268A Bowden Street in Dorchester. And okay, can you tell, tell us what your plans are? Okay, um, we are um, a paint party um, business where we do paint parties with um, kids and adults. We teach them how to paint uh, with these microphones and we play music. Um, we just play on the television. Exactly. Um, this is Justin Dykes. He's the other owner of Modern Party Art. Okay, is this, this is a, a new use, right? Yes, correct. Okay, is this something you have experience with uh, elsewhere? Um, we did traveling paint parties for three years before we uh, opened this studio. And so, uh, I'm, I'm confused, is it, is it already open? Yes. Yes, it we're open right now. Okay, so you opened it without getting, without getting the approvals? So we opened as just re art retail at first. Um, we did it, right now we have a temporary 
um, and live entertainment um, permit, I guess, uh, if I'm using the right correct words. Um, we would like to um, be able to just use the microphones. We want. We weren't, um, I guess, completely knowledgeable if we needed a live entertainment license to use our microphones to do the lessons for groups of people. Um, so once we found out we needed it, we applied right away. Okay, so how, the, not that this really matters, but how did this come to your attention? Did, did somebody, did an inspector or someone from ISD come and, and tell you you needed to get approval or what was the process? Um, so we share the building with a restaurant, the restaurant Cesaria who uh, we're friendly with and uh, they let us know that they, they, to yeah, they brought it to our attention asked if we had the proper permit for it and when we found out we didn't, we started the process. Okay. And is this the old Ashley's Breakfast Shop? No, it's actually, it was a Cuban convenience store. It actually was also um, CVC Unido um, a couple of years ago. Office time. Office. Um, so we're on the other, the opposite end of uh, the old Ashley's Breakfast Shop. Okay, got it. Um, okay, uh, uh, how many people at a time do, do you have in there for your events? Between eight and our maximum is like 20 people, um, which doesn't really happen that much because of COVID. Um, but we, most of our parties range between eight and 15 painters. And, and what is it, the total square footage that these uh, up to 20 people occupy? Um, so we have 1,008 square feet, um, but we've locked off uh, a 13 by 13 space that's where we put the partition so we can store our canvases and paint so I would say probably about 900 square feet eight, eight to nine hundred square feet that we use for painting okay thank you mm -hmm. um, uh, how, how are the uh, drawings Ms. Ms. Barraza Mr. Chair the drawings are okay okay it's pretty, <laughs> pretty straightforward <laughs> how are the paint colors <laughs> um, all right, is there uh, any questions to the board? Is there anybody here to speak on behalf of the uh, project? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Denise DeSantos here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on record and support the applicant. They've worked with the community and gone through all the community process. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I have no raised hands. Okay, um, can I have a motion, please? Mr. Chair, I would like to put for a motion of approval uh, to this applicant only. Yes, yes. Uh, Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. On the next case, calling BOA 118 9690 555 Washington Street. This is a change of legal office for a two family dwelling chiropractor's office to a floor family dwelling. This is an existing condition. There's no work to be done. Article, the violation of Article 51, Section 16, a multifamily use is conditional. Article 51, Section 17, dimensional regulations. Article 51, Section 56, off-street parking is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. of the property owner, um, Gary Cumier, who is the owner occupant of 555 Washington Street. Uh, before you today uh, is uh, a proposal to, I guess, what we're terming legalize or change occupancy. Uh, Mr. Cumier bought the property in the early 2000s and uh, has discovered that, in fact, the records that ISD contains do not reflect what is actually out, it is actually out there at this time. Um, as you can see from the drawings that are being uh, put before you, uh, the uh, building is a three-story structure which has remained unaltered for roughly or almost 40 years, I would suggest. Uh, looking back at the assessing records, uh, the city has assessed it as a four-family dwelling since 1986. Um, so for a considerable period of time, it has uh, been in this condition. Um, we have done extensive community outreach uh, to reach out to our abutters to alert them of what the intention is to, again, legitimize the building in its present state. Uh, we received some 30 uh, signatures of support on petitions that the board might have. We have also done in a fighters meeting, which we got unanimous support from those participating. And we have secured the approval of the Austin Brighton 
improvement commission relative to this. Um, like I said, this is something that in fact has been in existence for some time, and um, we, you know, we believe it, it would be appropriate to allow it to continue uh, at this point, as there is no proposal to alter the structure, extend it, expand it in any way, shape, or form. So we respectfully ask for the board's consideration in legitimizing the occupancy at this time. Okay, I, I guess I'm a little confused. You say for, uh, for all these years it has been functioning and it's been assessed as a four-family dwelling, yes? That's, that is correct, Mr. Chairman, so, yes. So where is the two-family and the chiropractic office designation come from? Um, a, a prior occupancy, we, we believe the best that we can determine is that the uh, second and third floors were the original apartments and that the first floor was the actual chiropractic office or practice sometime uh, you know, perhaps as far back as like the 70s or something along those lines there. And a uh, prior uh, property owner uh, converted that first floor into two dwelling units. And, uh, and the balance of the building has remained unchanged essentially since its uh, construction, we believe. And what, and what are the size of the, of the current four units? Yes, so on the first, I'll preface by saying all four units are single bedrooms. The first floor has a uh, unit of 675 square feet and 510 respectfully. The second floor, which is the third unit, is 726 square feet. And the third floor, the fourth unit, is that 852 square feet. Okay. Uh, how are the drawings, Ms. Maraza? Mr. Chair, the drawings are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of the applicant? Good morning, Chairman, members of the board, Jack Duggan, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Just want to go on record and support. The applicant went through a full community process, and there was an abutters meeting held on June 1st, uh, where abutters were overwhelmingly in support. The existing condition has been such for many years now, and the property is owner occupied. They received full support from the Brighton Austin Improvement Association. And our office has also received a letter of support and a letter of opposition. Thank you. And what was the opposition based on? Uh, I don't have that on me, but I believe uh, Mr. Fortune should have that. Uh, I think everything was submitted over to the board. Okay. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I do have one letter of opposition. I don't have a letter of support. I have one letter of opposition. And the opposition was in regards to how much parking. Uh, is involved in 555 Washington Street. Okay, but that's an existing condition, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. Uh, and, uh, anybody else want to speak in favor or opposition? Mr. Chair, I have no raised hands. Okay, can I have a motion, please? Mr. Chair, I'd like to put for a motion of approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Uh, Mr. Fortune, should we, should we try the, uh, the other one again? We're gonna go back to BOA 121 137 Center Street. Are you on, sir? Was that Mark Miller? Yes, it is, and I only see one of his names in the participants, so that's promising. Mark, can you hear us? Video is on and he's unmuted. Mr. Miller? We can't hear you if you're talking. On the mute tab, if you right click it and it, it should say audio options, um, you may be able to go there and switch your audio input. Do you want to call in? I can um, give you the number. I'm going to put the number in the chat.
Okay, I'm going to suggest the following, since this seems to be taking a, a while and, and may go on indefinitely. Uh, this is the last, uh, last case of the uh, 9.30 hearings. Um, our next case is at 11. What I'm going to suggest that we do is adjourn until 5 of 11. At that point, hopefully, Mr. Miller will be uh, on and we can consider oh, trying to make possibly call in. I don't know if you want to give it a second. I, it just seems to, I mean, we're just going to end up sitting here waiting. So I'm going to, I'm going to adjourn the uh, session until, uh, uh, um, 10 55. Okay. All right. Thank you. For a third time, hopefully three times a charm. DOA 12111993, out 137 Center Street. Name and address for the record, please. Yes, my name is Mark Miller, and I am the owner of the property. Um, thank you. Can you describe uh, what, what you have in mind? Yes, so <clears throat> currently um, the building is a three family um, uh, building, and it has a fully built attic with pre-existing um, framing of stairs or pre-existing stairs that lead up to a doorway into the attic. It's a, a very tall attic and it does have sufficient space um, with, with um, new walls up. Um, it provides an additional 700 square feet of living space. Um, <clears throat> my goal is um, my family is expanding and I would like to move back to the city of Boston. I work for um, Suffolk University, and um, it's a much easier commute. And um, for a combination of reasons of the growing family and being closer to work, and I did grow up most of my life in Boston and would like to move back to the city. So that is the impetus behind why I want to do this expansion um, of the third floor unit. So currently the third floor unit is a three bedroom, one bathroom and about 1200 square feet give or take and this would add an additional 700 square feet and i'd be adding two bedrooms and a bathroom on the attic level um, there are two homes directly to my left that um, appear to have um, the same layout with use with, with use of the attic on the fourth fourth floor um, same architectural design um, so I'm just seeking relief to do that. I think the FAR currently for the area is 1.0. The existing FAR is exceeding that already at 1.09. This would be expanding the FAR to 1.3. Um, and I believe that there's a height restriction in the area of 35 feet. And this would be um, adding height of approximately up to 40 feet um, um, from mid basement to mid attic. Um, I'm a little bit confused about that because you're just uh, 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 moving living space into the attic. You're not raising the roof, are you? Oh no, not at all. Um, so I'm not. I'm not exiting the existing structure at all. So the height, the excessive height, is an existing condition. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, and the only exterior work that you're talking about is uh, rear porch ceilings. Um, yes, yeah, so I mean, the only thing I've been doing is uh, exterior work is adding a roof, um, as you can see in that um, drawing A to the top left. I'd be adding a, 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 a Velux um, egress accessible skylight that opens at 45 degrees and is um, sufficiently from the, from the height of the ground um, to, to allow egress uh, from that uh, bedroom if necessary. So that's the only thing that I'm really adding is that skylight. Okay, because the rear porch stuff is just repairing existing conditions again, right? That's right. Okay. Uh, and um, I can't quite tell from the, uh, the drawing that I don't see the details well enough. What is the floor to ceiling height in, in this attic, renovated attic that you're proposing? Um, so the floor to ceiling height would just be a regular um, eight feet um, in, in height, approximately. Um, okay. How are the drawings, Ms. Barraza? Mr. Chair, the drawings are adequate. Okay, any questions from the board? Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of the applicants? Good morning, Chairman and members of the board. This is Jason Gant from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. 
I'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. An abutters meeting was held on July 19th, where Mr. Miller was able to answer any of the questions raised by the abutting community members. I do, however, want to highlight that I would like Mr. Miller to continue working with the Highland Park Neighborhood Coalition for the extended period of his actual plans. Anybody else either in favor or opposition? Mr. Chair, I have no raised hands. Can I have a motion then? Mr. Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Uh, uh, Mr. Miller, the vote uh, better late than never. The, uh, the motion passes. Uh, good luck. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, and this is perfect. It's now 11 a.m. Call the cases for 11 a.m. Are there any deferrals or withdrawals for 11 a.m.? Hearing none, I'll call the first case, calling DOA 124 1551 15 Crestway Road. This is a cut a 14 foot curb cut in cement driveway. The violation of Article 53, Section 56, off street parking loading. Article 53, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. And Article 53, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. See the applicant there. Should be Gail Sullivan, but I don't see her. Oh, and can you just check, please? All right, we'll go to the next one. We can come back to it. Okay. Okay. Following BOA 1234 384 14 Thomas Park. This is a basement renovation. The violation is Article 68, Section 8, excessive FAR. Name and address for the record, please. And Joseph Lazar is on. Hold on. Go ahead, Joseph. Hi, can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Hi. Um, thank you for uh, taking the time to hear our, our appeal. Um, we're just uh, hoping to uh, finish an, an, an unfinished basement in our single family home in South Boston. Uh, the purpose of this would just be to allow for additional space for our two daughters to play, uh, perhaps have uh, friends over when they're a little bit older. Um, we, we don't plan on renting it or, or doing anything else to bring in additional uh, people uh, into the house or, or cars to the neighborhood. And we were denied uh, based on uh, FAR uh, considerations. I think uh, our FAR was was already, uh, as now stands, above 2.0, which I believe is a limit. So adding any additional space would just put us further over the limit. So today, this is a single family home, Mr. Lazar. Yes, yes. yes it is. Yeah. And um, how many square feet in the? Uh, what is the uh, current use of the basement? Uh, storage. Okay. And what is the floor to ceiling height in the basement? It's about uh, maybe about six and a half feet, maybe six feet, six and a half feet. Okay, um, you're aware that that's a problem for living yeah. space. That it has the to be. The first one for eleven. Uh, we are yes, yes, and and the plan would be to uh, to dig down into the first floor. way. Yeah. The, the plan would be to excavate down to get to uh, to, to what height? To I, th I think it's seven and a half feet. Seven and a half feet. Okay. Seven foot six is noted on sheet eight four. Okay, seven foot six. Okay, and um, uh, and the idea is to simply have an open space, a play area. Yeah, um, and and a storage area and a bathroom, an open play area with a with a half bath or three quarter bath. Okay, so no bedrooms, no kitchen, nothing like that. Nothing like that, no. All right. Um, what is the relationship of that uh, basement to grade? You, is there an elevation that shows uh, um, how far below grade the, the, the space is? Um, it's a little hard to say. Uh, I don't think it's in, captured in the, uh, in the drawings. Um, the house is, that part of the house is built on a hill. So certain parts of the basement are almost entirely, one end of the basement is almost entirely underground, whereas the opposite end of the basement is, is at ground level. Is there a walkout? Uh, there is uh, in existence, yes. OK. Ms. Barraza, how are the uh, drawings? Mr. Chair, the drawings are adequate. So uh, do you uh, have, 
is there an elevation that you see that, that shows a relationship to grade? There are no elevations. Okay. Just uh, for just the future. The section, but it doesn't know the grade. Okay. Just for the future to the applicant, um, uh, it helps us make a determination if we know, if we can see what the relationship is to grade. So an elevation or a section would do that. Um, any questions from the board? Uh, is, is there anyone here to speak on behalf of the applicant? The chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office, Neighborhood Services, like to go record in support. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and a letter from Councillor Fling's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support as this proposal of a basement renovation will not add any additional units and density. Moreover, it, it does not add parking concerns and quality of life issues that might impact the neighbors. Councillor Flynn would like to offer his support for the project that's additional space for the growing family to remain in South Boston. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I have no raised hands. Mr. Okay. Chair, Secretary here, we have letters of support as well. Okay. All right. If uh, just uh, comment, if there is going to be uh, the BPDA note, notes that no building code code relief should be granted, which is obviously based on the fact that the current floor to ceiling height is six six, and that they, they would need to change that. So, if there is going to be a motion of approval, I would recommend a proviso be included that uh, no building code relief be part of the motion. But there's so, also a note on parking. Yes. So the applicant didn't mention that they're also proposing two parking spaces? No, no, we already have two parking spaces. That's not. Oh, on the site plan it says proposed parking space. That was a, uh, that was an old, um, that was an old site plan that I um, had clarified with uh, Frank D'Amato. Um, that was initially uh, part of our, our denial, but those parking spaces are in existence and that was just because it was um, the plot plan that it had existed before that project from the previous owners of the house. Okay, so just how many parking spaces are, are there now? Two. There's two existing parking yes. spaces? So, yes. Ms. Barraza, if you look at, uh, for, for the moment, ignore the BPDA recommendations. If you look at, on our agenda, just is calling out the yeah. basement renovation. Got so it. I was just going to say it up. There's only one violation, Article 68, no. Section 8, which is ex excessive if they are. Yeah. yeah, and just uh, just a question, just a question to the applicant. I'm looking at, at Google Earth. You have the, the gray house on the corner of Pacific. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's got it's it's got some room up above grade in the rear. I see that now. Um, I'll make a motion to approve um, with the proviso that no building code relief be granted. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. All those opposed. Uh, motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Following next, following next case, following BLA 1235 689 37 Whale Street. This is the construction of a five story low income permanent housing building with 26,570 square feet. It shall consist of 20 low income permanent housing units made up of 17 two bedrooms, three three bedroom units, and one management office. The violations Article 60, Section 40, are three parking loading. <coughs> Article 60, Section 9, the number of allowed stories has been exceeded. Article 60, Section 8, forbidden use in a three-family subdistrict. Article 60, Section 9, insufficient adopt lot area per unit. Article 60, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 60, Section 9, the maximum allowed height has been exceeded. Article 60, Section 9, insufficient usable open space. And Article 60, Section 9, insufficient rear yard setback. David Andrews, for the record, please. Uh, good morning. Uh, the secretary, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, attorney Joe Hanley, McDermott, Colton Miller, 28 State Street in Boston, here representing uh, the proponent uh, heading home. Uh, also with me is Gail Sullivan from Studio G, who is the project architect, and uh, Danielle Ferrier, who is the executive director of heading home, and Tim Flynn, who is the project manager. Um, Mr. Chair, I believe the ambassador is pulling up. We have a brief presentation we'd like to take you through um, by well, way of background. Mr. Hanley, if I could, as I recall, yes, we heard this case recently. And, yes, sir. And we denied without prejudice, not because we thought the merits of the case were problematic. On the contrary, I think we're very supportive 
of the mission, yep. but there was a concern about density and community opposition. So I guess what I would like to hear is what has changed between now and then for, for our um, review. Yes, sir, and, and thank you for that. That's what the, we put together for the presentation. So, uh, Madam Ambassador, if you just take me back to uh, the second page there, just above this. Um, as you noted, uh, Mr. Chair, we we're here on, or heading home was here on April 27th. Um, and uh, at that point, they were proposing um, a five story, 23 unit um, building at this site. Um, and you'll see that on the right, that was what was proposed. On the left is the existing condition. Um, this is an existing non-conforming use and structure. It's now uh, a 10 unit, three story permanent supportive housing building that is surrounded by an impervious surface. It is sort of midstream down a pretty steep grade between Blue Hill Ave and uh, Harvard. Um, and so we are coming back um, after listening very carefully to the comments that were provided by uh, this board on April 27th and engaging more with the community and working with the city uh, with a revised project. Next slide, uh, Madam Ambassador, please. So uh, we've put this together. Uh, this was based on the notes from the last hearing and uh, from the outreach, uh, responding to uh, input and feedback in five key areas, uh, building height, size and scale of the building, uh, the unit density, the open space, and there was a discussion about parking uh, and what is appropriate for the permanent support of housing expanded use. Um, what you will see in this presentation is a building that has been reduced in height, reduced in size, reduced in unit density, and increased in open space, and improved with uh, parking programs that we have worked with uh, with D&D, in particular, um, we have dropped the height from five to four stories, uh, which now uh, makes it much more consistent, uh, entirely consistent with the building uh, on the street uh, to the right of us. We've also reduced the size uh, of the FAR, which drops the FAR to 2.6. Um, the unit density has gone from 23 to 20. Uh, the open space is almost 175 uh, square feet per unit. And we were able to identify um, nine parking spaces in the area in addition to the on-site parking space, which is intended uh, to be for the uh, permanent supportive housing staff. And we conducted a study. Uh, the final thing I will say, and you'll see this at the end of the presentation, we uh, returned to the BPDA. This is an Article 80 small project uh, in July with a notice of project change. We engaged in another public meeting. We had a site walk that was sponsored by elected officials and brought all of our consultants to. And we've garnered uh, more community support as a result of these changes. Uh, at this point, I'd like to ask Gail uh, to take you through, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the board, the details on the proposed changes. Gail? Yes, thanks. Can we have the next slide, please? And I'll do it, I promise, Mr. Chair, very quickly. I uh, get to the end, the point, which is that there is a fair amount of community support. On the left, you can see the proposal that we submitted to the earlier ZBA hearing. On the right-hand side, you see the reduction, four stories facing Whale Street. And its height off of the grade now is just exactly as close as we can get to exact in alignment with the adjacent apartment building. Next slide, please. So as I said, and we did this diagram to show it, 37 whales is now approximately the same height as 35, which is an apartment building and lower in height than 33 and 31. This shows the point that Joe is making that there is quite a steep slope on this site. And then if we can have the next. There'd been a question I know at the previous CBA hearing about this building being appropriate or inappropriate to the neighborhood scale. So we actually took a closer look at both Wales and at adjacent es Esmond Street, which is in the foreground. And what you can see here is there are a plethora of non-conforming buildings in this neighborhood. There, in fact, are a lot of apartment buildings with 15 or more units in them. 
including the three immediately adjacent to us uphill. And then there are a lot of double, triple deckers, so six unit, three story buildings. So we don't actually think that the building that we're proposing is out of scale with the current neighborhood condition. It is, of course, non conforming to the 3F5000, as are many of these existing buildings. Next slide, please. Just a quick sec, how we reduced it from 23 to 20 units. We knocked the floor off, but we were able to add two units at the ground level at the rear because this site slopes down from Wales toward its Abbott Street neighbors. And in order to reduce the retaining wall at the back of the site, we dropped the grade. So we dropped it a little bit more and were able to fit two units in there. So two more units for homeless families, which we didn't want to lose. Yes, thank you, the next. Yes, to the open space plan. So the key here is there is more open space per unit. We have substantially improved the site from a sustainable site point of view. Rather than 100% paved or built, it is now heavily built, yes, but also landscaped all around. And I will note what Joe said, there is one parking space here at the bottom left. That's the parking space that's assigned for staff. And then it's eight additional units, which I'll talk about in a moment. Let's go to the next. And this addresses the parking. So although these are unhoused families uh, in the past, 2% of their households had cars. But the neighbors we know are very concerned about it and heading home done a lot of work to try to address that. So they've negotiated for four spaces at a D&D owned property at 27 Wales. So four properties up the hill and across the street from that four parking spaces at the Salvation Army, which primarily uses its parking during the day for its childcare program. They are in negotiation now. So as Joe said, this would give us a total of nine spaces available, more than what Henning Hope thinks is needed for the residents, but we wanted to do that to make the neighborhood comfortable. And go to the next, please. One of the issues that came out in the more recent community meetings is an issue of stormwater. So you heard, I know, at the last hearing from some neighbors who opposed the project. And I think I want to go back a moment and talk about a couple of the things that we've heard in a number of community meetings from neighbors about their concerns. One is oh, the failure to be What is going on water. here? Shit. One is the failed retaining wall, and the other that we heard more recently in the July meeting was an issue of stormwater runoff. People downhill complained that their basements were flooding with water, and they think that that's coming from 37 Whale Street. So our team actually did some investigation with Howard Stein Hudson, the civil engineer, Haley and Aldrich, the geotechnical engineer, because one of the things that happened in that community meeting is that a neighbor uphill said that his basement was also flooding. So we've undertaken an early investigation and taken a look at this and clearly 37 whales can't be flooding somebody uphill. But probably it is true that this totally impervious site with a failed retaining wall is contributing to the problems downhill, but it is not the limit of the problems. So Howard Stein Hudson and I realize this is outside of CBA jurisdiction, but I'm mentioning it because we think it's part of the whole issue with the neighborhood. Howard Stein Hudson went and investigated the Boston Water and Sewers stormwater system in the area. Pipes may be adequately sized in the road. There were very few catch basins to catch any of the water. Water is flooding down the streets. So first solution, the easiest one, of course, is add catch basins that may or may not be sufficient. But DND, at Heading Home's request, has undertaken to reach out to Boston Water and Sewer, and Boston Water and Sewer is now in the process of starting to reach out to the neighbors so that they can find out what the problems are and look at how this can be addressed. The key thing that I'm raising about this is this issue of the flooding and the stormwater is not an issue that 37 Whale Street created. 
nor can 37 Whale Street by itself solve it. We do have, as shown here, a very robust stormwater management system in design, and that will solve the problem of the water on 37 Whales. It will not solve the problem of the water uphill, and we think that that has to be solved with Boston Water and Sewer. The other thing I wanted to mention about this is if the ZBA does approve this project, Heading Home has committed. In fact, the designs are almost completed, the construction documents. They've committed to doing the retaining wall and the stormwater management system as an emergency project, along with demolition of the existing building. It has to be demolished for us to do this work. That would start as soon as we can get a permit in the fall, and we envision it being completed by spring of 2022. This will alleviate a lot of the problem that the neighbors have been experiencing. But as I say, not 100% of it. We can go to the next for a moment. Part of our investigation was just looking at the basic physical reality. There is a 62 foot elevation difference from the top of Wales to the bottom of Abbott. That's a lot of speed at which water can flow downhill and it will not be caught very well. So we think that's probably the source of the problem of the flooding at the bottom of Abbott. And as I say, it's got to be a neighborhood scale solution, not a single property level solution. So thank you for giving me a moment to speak to this issue. And now if we can go to the next. Joe mentioned that in addition to the previous neighborhood engagement, can, we can we, can we uh, expedite this part? We'll, we'll hear about the neighborhood participation from the uh, uh, mayor's office of neighborhood services. Absolutely. So I, I think Joe just wanted to take a little look at the support. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hear that in testimony. So thank you very much. And again, Thanks. with the stormwater in some way, uh, that's fascinating, but not necessarily germane to, uh, uh, to our deliberations. But uh, thank you for that. And uh, I also uh, want to just express appreciation for the changes that have been made in response to uh, our, our last decision. So, uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Barraza, you have the, the current updated drawings? Mr. Chair, I do have the drawings and they're adequate. They're adequate, okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, any questions from the board? Um, is there anyone here to speak on behalf of the project? Uh, yes, uh, Dante Key was here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, we'd like to go on record in support of the proposal. Um, at uh, August 9th, there was a you know BPDA public meeting, and then from there there was um, BPDA, uh, BPDA approval August 19th, and then from there September 14th there was a you know site walk with neighbors of Butters and um, elected officials. The questions and concerns were addressed by the um, the team um, here, and again we'd like to speak to what was spoken about um, from the applicants, from uh, reduction of building heights, unit density, um, parking concerns, sorry, parking concerns, as well as, um, yes, uh, park concerns. So we, again, we'd like to, at the mayor's office, like to go on record in support of these um, low-income permanent housing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else to speak on behalf of the project? Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dustin Gardner, on behalf of City Councilor Andrea Campbell's office. We'd also like to go on record in support, uh, really acknowledging the extensive work that they did uh, with the community and the modifications they've made after hearing all the concerns. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, and members of the board, Karen Foley for City Council of Anissa Asabi George's office. And we'd like to echo the sentiments of the mayor's office and Councilor Campbell's office and support this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, this is Sheila Dillon from the Department of Neighborhood Development. I just want to, D&D &D is going on record in support of this project. We feel this is a very committed owner and develop, development team. They've listened to the community. They've listened to uh, many city agencies. And we think the revisions now should move, the project with the revision should move forward. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Chair, Secretary here, we do have letters of support, but we also have letters of opposition. And, and what are those based on, Mr. Fortune? They're opposed to the project in the neighborhood. Okay. Okay. Are there any uh, raised hands, Ms. Ms. Ambassador? Yes, we have about uh, five raised hands. We okay. can just start with the people, um, direct abutters. Uh, I'll start with Devin. Devin, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Good morning. My name is Devin. That was a um, legislative aide to Representative Holmes. Um, here, just speaking in support of the project. Um, Representative Holmes Thank and I attended us. a meeting um, with the, the uh, butters were invited and, and you know, had a, a conversation. Um, not too many of butters came out, but definitely um, were there to do a sidewalk with the development team. Thank you, Devin. Thank you. Okay. L. Dodson, you've been unmuted. Can you state your full name and address for the record, please? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes, good morning. Dodson, uh, 45 Wilshire. Street, I'm a director of Butter. Um, there is no support from the abutters and community for this project. Absolutely none. And uh, just, I'm trying to keep it brief because, uh, in brevity of time, but in the response to changes, as Gail herself sense self mentioned, there are a plethora of apartment buildings in this community already. We don't, there is no room for what they are trying to do. And they know it and we know it. The, the parking that they have identified, they have misidentified for the last two years. And they still don't have a commitment. The 27 wheels that they proposed, that's a private, that they, from the last meeting, that is an owner's, that is a private residence. They can't, Salvation Army closes at night. So they've been in negotiation with Salvation Army for two plus years and they still have no agreement because Salvation Army will not allow them to. They have not resolved or addressed any of the issues. The property, the project is too dense for the community. They know it and we know it and we don't understand why they can't. They could not manage the 10 units that they had there. They could not manage the parking. They could not manage the residence. It was a constant um, problem to the community. We are not adverse to this. We have a grandparent's home. We have three sober homes. We have nine plus apartment buildings in our area. We are not adverse to what they are trying to do. It is the scale of this project that the community is, a, is against. The scale is just too big. Thank it's you. It's too big for you. Thank you very much. All right, and caller 28, um, you've been unmuted. This is the um, 617-436 number. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? My name is Richard Austin. I own the building at 25, and listen to this, and 27 Whale Street. The lot you are talking about is full of trees. There's no driveway or anything, and part of the land is being used for uh, dumpsters. And I had that registered by the city of Boston years ago, because I wanted to know where my land began. But I own 27 Whales, and I told you in the last meeting, you know, so I don't know. There's no way you have to spend the fortune trying to park cars there. You have to change the curbing, and you have to remove trees and, and pave it, or whatever you're going to do, level it off. You'll never get that done unless you're going to spend a lot of money. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Caller 24, you've been unmuted. This is uh, 617 Go ahead. Yep. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Minor Perez representing the Carpenters Union, would like to go on record on support of this project. Thank you. All right, and call it 12. Um, <laughs> this is a 617-445 number. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Alvesta Green, 209 Harvard Street. Go we ahead. Are looking, we are looking for a way to resolve the bulk of water that comes down onto our property. It is causing the buildings on Harvard Street to buckle. They had to have uh, numerous uh, owners to put concrete blocks under their building to hold it up because the underground water is pushing the earth from under our property, which means in another five years, our houses may be condemned from this water runoff. Now, what, we're not complaining so much about the water runoff, but what it has done in the past 10 years to the property. My garage is totally uh, activated by all of the dirt and trash that has come down under their wall that fell down. They are continuously to bring in dumpsters and trash from other places to be uh, um, saved on this property cause huge rats to come around the property. How do we 
be compensated for the, what we have to do to stand our building up, what we have to do to fix our garages. Oh. The garage, <laughs> I have to keep our garage. Okay, uh, thank you. We uh, we get it, and we understand that there is a real serious problem with uh, with drainage and water runoff that in in the entire neighborhood that needs to be addressed. I have uh, no additional raised hands. Mr. No additional raised hands. Okay, can I have a motion, please? Uh, can I, um, Mr. Chairman? I have a question regarding the off-site parking at Twenty Seven Well Street. If, can the applicant please just? let us know in terms of what terms of agreement in terms of years if this is dd owned property for how long if if um some of the abutters were questioning the negotiations of salvation and army I'm, i would be curious to know how long would dnd kind of hold that space for 37 whales yeah um tim flynn is on the project manager tim do you want to speak to that process yes uh Hi, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the board, thank you. Um, we have a uh, signed LOI with the city uh, that indicates that we will uh, uh, rent for no less than one year to reevaluate our statistics with the opportunity to then build uh, off of that, along with uh, the Salvation Army, which we started negotiations with, uh, with them. Uh, after our last DBA hearing, which was uh, approximately three, four months ago. So, yeah, so the answer is only for one year, for now. Uh, well, it's it, it going to increase. If I, if I could yeah, for a minute, Sheila Dillon here, um, I have no issue at all. We do all of our leases when we lease land for parking and other air, we use it for one year. But I have no problem working with uh, our legal counsel to do one year with an option to renew. So that's not a problem for us, and I'd be glad to look at that. I also want to work with the developer on proper landscaping, et cetera, but, um, but I, I'd be glad to look at that as an option. Yeah, and if I may just speak to the parking. Um, so the zoning code requires 0.25 for transitional housing, which would be five spaces. Um, in the past, um, 10 years back, this was used as a property management site. Heading Home has moved that operation to Cambridge. Um, so our study with Howard Stein Hudson and, you know, and Heading Home's background is that there are the need for two spaces for every 10 units. Right now, Whale Street has ample, ample open public parking during the day. At night, when people come home, it's a little different, and that's why in addition to 27 whales, we've also found evening parking uh, nearby with the Salvation Army. So it's intended to be very specific to the circumstances. Okay. To address Mr. The yeah, I mean, my understanding is you haven't finalized the agreement with the Salvation Army. Is that correct? Let's just be clear about that. Correct. It's, it's a negotiation. Okay. Okay. I, I, I think we've got the information that we need. Ms. Barraza, do you anything else? No, I'm, I think I'm clear. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to put forward a motion. I would like to put forward a motion of approval with a proviso of BPDA design for the X year. And also I'm encouraging a long-term partnership with DND to solve some of the parking issues that the neighbors have brought up in terms of concerns. I also would like to, um, you know, commend some consensus that was put forward in terms of on-site stormwater management, uh, and as well as the reduction of height to be more contextual in the neighborhood. Is there a second? I'll second that, Sherry. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Calling next case, calling BOA 4334, 18 Arbonite Street. This is to construct a new rear exterior spiral stair and roof deck with a pergola. The violation of Article 65, Section 9, the building height is excessive, and Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, uh, Dean Tulin, uh, 18 Armandine Street, Unit 3. Tell us uh, what you have in mind, please. Sure. So, um, uh, oh, thanks for sharing that. So it's uh, I'm on the top floor of a of a three unit condo, and I'm gonna put um, I'd like to put a spiral staircase on the existing uh, like back deck fire escape, 
uh, to get up to um, my my roof for some more um, outdoor space. Um, and how big is the roof deck? Uh, it is. Uh, is there exact in the architect? It is 458 square feet. Thanks, Eric. And it's set towards the rear half of the building? Yeah, correct. Right. Okay. Um, so the, uh, we have an, uh, an issue of uh, building height. Is there, is there already, the, the maximum building height in the area is 35 feet. What is the height of the building? The, the building, we believe, is 36 feet tall existing. And then, and then, what would, uh, including the pergola, what would the uh, the height of the new structure be? Uh, including the pergola, it would be 46 feet. The roof deck itself would be at about 38 feet. Okay. All right. Uh, how are the drawings, Ms. Barraza? Mr. Chairman, the drawings are adequate. All right, any questions from the board? Is there anyone here to, uh, to speak? Oh, actually, before I go to public testimony, uh, Mr. Hampton, I believe the BPDA recommends denial. Could you uh, uh, explain? Uh, yeah, it, it was just something that when you look at it from the plant, it's a, it's a pretty substantial structure on top of the triple decker. Um, and that's the reason for our uh, recommendation for denial. Uh, if, the, if there weren't a pergola, would that make a difference? I think it would, yeah. OK. All right, is there anyone here to speak on behalf of the applicant? Yes, uh, Dante Peebles here from the Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, there was a community of butters meeting held on June 9th, 2021, where no concerns were raised by neighbors of butters. Um, and again, we'd like to go on working in support. Thank you. And, and my downstairs neighbor joined that meeting and supported it. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have no additional raised hands. Okay, um, uh, I'd, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like a motion, please. Uh, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to make a motion um, to approve the roof deck but deny the pergola. Okay, so can we do that in the context of BPDA design review? Yeah, I just want to make it clear that they don't have relief for the pergola. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so there's a motion. Uh, to approve the roof deck uh, with BPDA design review with a proviso that there no pergola be included. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I oppose. Uh, Ms. Barraza opposes, uh, but the motion passes. <coughs> well, back to an early case calling BOA 1241551, 15 Crestway Road. It's 15 Crestway Road on. Yes, it's caller 27. Call All right, let me just yeah. call it into the record then. The violation, this is a cut, a 14 foot curb cut, cement driveway. The violation is Article 53, Section 56, off street parking load requirement. Article 53, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient, and Article 53, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Yeah. Name and address for the record, please. Yeah. 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 You've been unmuted, caller 27. Hello, is uh, the applicant on? No, Anthony. Okay, sorry, go okay. ahead. Go ahead. It's Anthony, last name is Pascucci. The address is 15 Crossway Road, East Boston. Mr. Pascucci, could you tell us what you're proposing? I'm proposing a two-car two driveway on, off the road. Uh, Crestway Road with a 14 foot cut, but I would drop that down to 12 if needed. Um, just to get my vehicles off the road and remove the handicap um, holes in front of my house because I'm severely handicapped and it's really hard being on the street to get into my vehicle with traffic flow. Okay, uh, we appreciate that, but it, it, uh, my concern is that it looks like from the drawing that's on the screen now that the two parking spots that you are proposing are in front of your house. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it is, sir. Okay, so we have a problem uh, with front yard parking, um, but uh, let's go. 
Mr. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Secretary here. I just wanted to, Bob D'Amico has spoke on this. Would you like his comments for the record? No, go ahead, please. And regarding 15 Crestway Road, since there is parking on the side of Crestway, Crestway Road, the maximum width of a residential curb cut is 12 feet, and this is front yard parking. He requests an eye for this application. Okay. Um, well, let's go through the, uh, the process. Uh, Ms. Barraza, uh, how are the plans? Mr. Chair, the plans are adequate. Well, <laughs> they, they, they technically, may, the drawing may be adequate. I'm not quite sure if they are adequate in terms of... Uh, uh, yeah, the drawings are adequate. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? I, I just... In this part of East Boston, I'm very familiar with it, and with the topography of the land, driveways like this are pretty common on Baltimore Ave, Crestway, Faywood Ave, Oregon Ave. So I just, it's, it's well, we don't allow front yard parking. It's not un, uncommon in this part of East Boston. Okay. Is there um, an accessible on, is there an accessible on ramp near the property? Not, not real, not to my knowledge. I mean, I drive by that street every day. It's like a hill. It's, it's a difficult place for someone with accessibility issues to park on the street, for sure. On side of parking. And, uh, and there's not enough room uh, to have the driveway extend alongside the house to the rear, is there? No, there isn't. There's only eight foot from the side of the house to the uh, my property line. Yeah. Yeah, we've had seven and a half feet uh, driveways being proposed here, but uh, <laughs> Uh, as, yes. as, the board, as the board may recall. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, can uh, can we hear from? Uh, is there anyone here to speak uh, either in favor or opposition of the uh, proposal? Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Lina Tramelli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to run the record in support for this proposal. We recognize the need of the resident of having this driveway. He's um, handicapped and has been struggled for the past years of getting to his house. So having this driveway will improve the quality of his life. Thank you. And Mr. Chai had no raised hands. Okay. Um, before we entertain a motion, I would just remind the board that we can't, we don't approve or disapprove based on uh, the current occupant of the house. We do it based on the long-term uh, yeah. uh, property uh, situation. So. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to make a motion to approve. This is a, a common occurrence in these streets in East Boston. So I'd like to make a motion to approve. Would you approve two or one? I would approve two with the 12 foot curb cut. So the proviso that the curb cut be reduced to 12 feet. I don't have a problem with that. <clears throat> is there a second? There's no second, so the, uh, the motion does not carry. Can I have another motion? I would like to make a motion to approve with only one parking space and with a 10-foot curb cut. Is I'll, there a... I'll, 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 I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any oppo I'm, I'm opposed uh, due to front yard parking. Uh, uh, every, everyone else in favor? Yes. Motion, yes. Pass motion passes. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I call the recommendations. It's now 1123. Um, for the record, the recommendations, subcommittee met. On September 23rd at 5 p.m. on 1010 Mass Ave, uh, these are the recommendations. Case BOA 12159053034 High Street was to construct a new two-story addition on the existing dwelling. It was deferred to the full board today at 1230. Case BOA 12254877777 East Broadway. <coughs> it was to pave portions of the side and rear yard, permeable pavers, and create two off street parking. It was approved with the proviso, the BTD, recurrence of the driveway size. <clears throat> Case BOA 119-0195-683 East 7th Street. It was deferred to 1019. 
to the full board at 1230. Case DOA 1087142, 15 Nottingham Street was extended living space. It was denied without prejudice, it was no show. Case BOA 1206766, 99 Woodrow Avenue, was confirmed Auckland's existing single family. It was approved. Case BOA 1228701, Blake Street, was constructed three story, third story bedroom addition. It was approved. Case BOA 1213068, 18 Prescott, was confirmed a single family. It was denied without prejudice, with no show. Case BOA 1180850, 302 Lamartine Street, was demolished existing front and rear decks, construct new rear porches. It was approved. <coughs> Case BOA 1203875, 73 Pershing Road, was extended living space to the basement unit one. It was approved. Case BOA 1213674, 26 Burton Avenue, it was confirmed Arthur is a single family and added an addition to a second story, it was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1234 261 34 Maury Street was moved existing masonry stairs and replaced with wood, wood frame. Porch and stairs, it was approved. Need a motion? To accept the recommendation by the subcommittee. Is there a second? Barraza, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we, the uh, next item on the agenda is at 12.30, rediscussions. So um, we will be adjourning the meeting uh, until 12.30. I knew I could count on you. Ms. Dong. Present. Uh, Mr. Ruggiero. Good afternoon. Mr. Kendall. Mr. Chip. Ms. Logue. Present. Ms. Barraza. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, I'm going to call the rediscussions for 1230, calling case BOA 116 1771 168. Gulf Street. Mr. Mr. Chief Mr. 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 Secretary? Yes. Do you referrals? Oh, yes, I'm sorry, you're correct. See, see what happens? Thank you, Mr. Mr. Small. Uh, are there any deferrals or withdrawals for 1230? Yes, 12, jo 12 George Street. Thank you. For the record, calling BOA 118 5582 12 George Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small. Business address of 51 Dobson Road. We're here today seeking a deferral of this matter as the plans have changed and we need to go back to the East River Neighborhood Association to present them. Okay, how long do you think that'll take? Um, we're on the agenda for the October meeting, so anytime um, after okay. mid October is fine. Okay, can I have a motion, please? Motion for deferral. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Can you come up with a date, please? You'll have a date of November 9th at 12.30. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Mr. Secretary? Yes, sir. Uh, I need to defer 12R Plain Street. Sure. Hold on two seconds. You. Calling BOA 118-4796-12R Plain Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, members of the board. Uh, my name is David Higgins, and my address is 20 Main Street. Uh, I'm seeking a brief deferral for, uh, for number 12, 12R Plain Street, uh, just in light of some late information that I just received this morning. Uh, we, we haven't had a, a community li liaison here in Dorchester for a number of months, and kind of communication has broke down. We, we've had good meetings with, with, uh, with uh, Pope Hill Civic Association, and uh, a good a butters meeting, but I, I want to. I just would like a uh, short deferral just to just to, to speak to one or two more neighbors to see if we can all get on the same page. Okay, <laughs> all right. Is there, can I have a motion, please? Motion for deferral. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. You also, also have a date. You also have a date of uh, November 9th at 12:30. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Have a good day, Mr. Secretary. Yes, yep. I'm sorry. All right. Go ahead. In Russell Street, please. 
Which one? I'm sorry. Nine Russell Street and Ward. Right, Doa one one seven three six five four nine Russell Street. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano, um, with an address of 11 Beacon Street. We are seeking a short deferral, if possible, for 9 Russell Street. We did defer the last time based on uh, community feedback. We worked to make changes. We've modified the plans, and those are now being submitted, so they just have to be reviewed. So this would be a second deferral? Correct, Mr. Chairman, yep. Second, but last, correct? Correct. Okay, can I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion for deferral. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. Uh, we have November 9th at 1230. That's the earliest we can get you in. Thank you very much. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 1230? Mr. Ford, did we receive, yeah. did we receive yeah. a letter about 18 Evans Street? Yep, that's what I was just going to say. Just going to let you guys know. Uh, going to call it in for the record. They're withdrawing. So case BOA 119 4924 18 Evans Street is withdrawing. So make a motion for denial without prejudice. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All, all opposed? The motion carries. Following the first case for rediscussion, calling VOA 116 1771 168 Gov Street. This is a change of occupancy from four unit residential to eight unit residential dwelling and construct a new fifth story addition with roof deck. Violations Article 27 T 5. This is in the East Boston iPod. Article 53, Section 8. <coughs> basement units are forbidden. Article 53, Section 9. Ins insufficient additional lot area per unit. Article 53, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 53, Section 9, the number of allowed stories has been exceeded. Article 53, Section 9, the maximum allowed height has been exceeded. Article 53, Section 9, insufficient open space per unit. Article 53, Section 9, insufficient rear yard. Article 53, Section 9, insufficient side yard. Article 53, Section 52, roof structure restriction. Article 53, Section 56, insufficient parking spaces. Article 53, Section 56.5, Osprey Parking Maneuverability, and Article 9, Section 1, Extension of a Non-Conforming Building. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Richard Lins, 245 Sumner Street. Um, Mr. Chair, I might have a brief second call as I'm having some technical issues where the, uh, the feed keeps coming in and out. I just want to re-log out, re-log back in. Can I come back in a few minutes and just... Um, all right, why don't, we, why, don't we move on, why don't we move on to the next case and then go back Thank to you. you. Thank you. All right, I won't call the violations and all the purpose again. We'll just call the docket number. Yep. Calling the next case, calling BOA 1210389, 16 South Russell Street. This is to legalize the ground level dwelling unit to correct occupancy from a store and four dwelling units to five dwelling units. No work to be done. The violations, Article 17, Section 1. Usable open space is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Let me just see if that's um, Charles. Is, are you here for this proposal? I see your hand is raised. I'm on, I just want to, um, in opposition, I want Oh, to... no, nope, one second. Uh, this person didn't check in. Um, Hi, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm Kevin Joyce oh. for the applicant. I'm sorry. Um, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. Mr. Chairman. Describe the proposal. Right. This uh, uh, this first came on on August uh, 31st. It was deferred until today. Uh, the, the proposal was to legalize uh, the building as five residential apartments. Uh, the old records at ISD carry it as four apartments. I mean, four apartments and one store, where it's really five apartments. It's been that way since my client bought it in 1997. Prior to that, the city uh, carried it as five residential units on uh, the tax bills. We uh, were proceeding before the board on August 31st. The board did have a question or two for the architect. There was a communication failure, and uh, it was deferred until today. So how would the chair like me to proceed? Well, um, why don't you describe uh First of all, remind us um, how this, if this has been the same way since 1997, what has brought it to the attention of ISD? I don't know what actually prompted it, 
Uh, my client was uh, inquiring over there. He wanted to do some work in the building and was told that the occupancy from the 1934 long form uh, stayed at four apartments and a store. And the condition of the building since 1997, when he bought it, has always been five residential units. The residential unit we're seeking to legalize is on the on the ground floor. Uh, the it's, a, it's a it's a ground floor unit. And There's a basement is, below it. And the the basement below it is used for what? Storage, basement, utilities. What's it's the size? Basement. What's the size of this um, uh, of this ground floor unit? Uh, the ground floor unit is 511 square feet. Okay. Um, is there uh, uh, is there a request for some building code relief here? No, no building code relief is required. Uh, the Beacon Hill Civic Association asked us to supply them with a uh, memorandum from the fire code consultant, which we did, and we've also filed that with the board. Uh, okay. The architect is on the line in case it's technical issues that you need to be discussed. Okay. And then just remind me, uh, when we deferred it uh, last time, my, my memory is a little foggy. What, what were the, the issues with the drawings that, that we had problems with and asked for clarification? I, I think the, the question was about the unit size, I think. I'm pretty sure, as I remember, we were inquiring as to the size of the other two units in the building. The other Which two? You, but other, other, the other four. The other four. One unit of the other four would be 471 square feet, and the other three units are 609 square feet. And okay. I think that's where the communication broke down. Okay, all right. Well, in any case, we're, we're really dealing only with the issue of this ground level unit, uh, regardless. Um, uh, Mr. Barraza, how are the drawings? The drawings are adequate. Okay, any questions from the board? Is anyone here to speak on behalf of the applicant? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. George Quinn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. On July 12th, the appellant met with the Butters, one of whom had concerns regarding potential changes to the facade, um, of which there will be none. The Beacon Hill Civic Association presented no opposition, and we received a number of letters of support. At this time, our office would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Sling's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support based on feedback from neighbors and a letter of non opposition from the Beacon Hill Civic Association. Thank you. Thank you. I do have one raised hand. Let me just check. Charles, are you here to give testimony on this project on 60 South Russell? I, I am. Okay, yep. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? So my first name is Charles, my last name is Collins, and I live at 31 South Russell Street. So I've lived at South Russell Street for a number of years, actually prior to 1997, and I don't remember um, being invited to, you know, uh, in any of the neighborhood reach outs on this proposed uh, change in occupancy. So, and also I want to I want to uh, state that the Beacon Hill Civic Association doesn't represent, you know, all the neighbors on South Russell Street. Um, this owner has been a problem on the street for many years. Um, his tenants are um, problematic. They don't respect the, uh, the street, the uh, trash regulations, the, um, the uh, recycling rules. Um, there uh, have been issues with noise, um, and um, so I, I guess the, the owner has has presented, uh, you know, um, that he's not really able to manage a multi-unit building. I, I'm reluctant to um, give him the benefit of the doubt because he has not um, demonstrated that he's a good neighbor. Uh, he doesn't respect, as I said earlier, um, the city ordinances um, or the... Uh, uh, okay, well, uh, your testimony uh, clearly implies that the, uh, the landlord is not a good neighbor and not a great landlord. Um, unfortunately, we're only dealing with the question of just legalizing this particular occupancy. Um, so um, if 
Do you have a problem with that per se, limited to that issue? Yes. Um, my understanding is that the, the uh, window in the back of this apartment is um, five feet off the ground. So it would be very difficult for anybody to leave by that, um, that exit if there was a, an issue. In the okay, uh, Ms. Barraza, is there uh, adequate e access and egress uh, on this ground floor and level unit? So one of the questions is because the applicant doesn't have elevations or a section, and I can't see the rear of the building through Google. <clears throat> What's pointed on the existing first floor is an emergency egress ladder. And I just want to confirm that in the rear bedroom that you're able to exit the window and that there is an adequate fire egress stair ladder that's existing. Oh, that's, 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 to that, get to the alley. And then, and then there's the front uh, access. The front is fine. It ha there's a door. So do you think, do you think, that, do you think that arrangement with uh, with the uh, rear window meets code? It says here that the window meets minimal clearance for emergency. So I guess the question Mr. is, how high is it from the ground to the sill? Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Ms. Barraza, I just yeah. we do have a letter from the Beacon Hill Civic Association where they went out. And they got someone uh, that uh, consultant named Fitzmaier and Tachi uh, that talks about the window that you're talking about and yep. the fire escape. So would you like me to read that for the record? Is, is, it, 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 is the report is it, is it adequate? Can you summarize it? Yeah, it's I can adequate. summarize it. Uh, it says the window meets all dimensional requirements for code compliance, emergency escape, and rescue opening. According to the BHCC, it's in non-opposition to the request for relief, and then. It does say, however, the request for um, to inspect the approved is this bedroom window egress uh, for the fire code prior to the next occupant occupying unit 16A. Okay. Uh, this is the chair, it's Jeff. Uh, yes, yes, Jeff. Uh, if you had noticed on our recommendation just to cover this, we recommended approval with no building code relief yeah, I see that. because of the window. Yeah. Um, so that's okay. just our okay. position as well. Yeah, Mr. Chair, which we makes also sense. support as well. Yeah, that, that's that's where I was going. Um, okay, so uh, uh, first of all, to the applicant, I think that uh, apparently there's some work that the landlord uh, needs to be doing uh, with, <laughs> relative to his uh, neighbors, and that's outside of the purview of the ZBA. But we would strongly recommend that uh, uh, that some healing and mending offenses be done. But I'm looking for a motion now. To approve Mr. Chair? Oh. the proviso that no building code relief be given. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, the motion passes. It's approval with a proviso that no building code relief be granted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, would you like me to go back to Gov Street or would you like me to continue? Uh, let's see if, uh, if Mr. Lenz is ready. I am, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to call the docket number and then ask for your name and address. Uh, calling BOA 116 1771 168 Gov Street. Name and address for the record, please. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, Richard Lenz, the business address at 245 Sumner Street in East Boston. I'm here on behalf of the petitioner uh, with respect to 168 Gove Street. Okay, you want to tell us about the project? Sure, and, and we're back before the board. Uh, we did take a deferral. Uh, at the last hearing for two reasons. One, uh, there was a question relative to a, um, an old easement that is shown on our site plan uh, that was uh, raised by ISD as well as Mr. Broom. Uh, we've gone back and done a uh, thorough and more extensive uh, title exam and have determined that that easement is uh, extinguished because the lots that were originally uh, established have been combined into, into common ownership and therefore the uh, purpose of the easement and Certainly, the intent of the easement when it was created uh, serves no 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 further purpose. So, uh, we will update our site plan with IST to have that reflected. But I just want to make sure that was clear for the record. The second issue, Mr. Chairman, uh, involves uh, existing tenants in the building. 
Uh, this proposal seeks to change the use and occupancy from an existing four unit building to six units. This is located in the MFR, multifamily residential district, and therefore- Mr. Uh, Lenz, let me just interrupt you for a second. The, the project is advertised as eight. Are you uh, saying it's six? Correct, and we, we've, we've uh, filed updated plans with ISD and the plans that are stamped before the board uh, is for six units. Okay, so the agenda is outdated. Outdated, that is correct. The original plan was for eight with a vertical addition that has been modified based on community process. Okay. All right, thank you. Sure. Uh, so, as I was saying, this is uh, the proposed change would go from four units to six units. Um, and this building uh, that was acquired by a client about uh, just under two years ago uh, is certainly in need of upgrades and repairs. The building is uh, probably close to 100 years old. Uh, obviously, we intend to preserve the existing structure. As you can see from the photos that I provided, as well as the site plan, the building currently uh, occupies pretty much the entire footprint of the site. Uh, with a non-functional garage located to the rear. Uh, the proposal, uh, and again, based on some of the comments, and I'm sure you'll hear these, uh, was to uh, do a complete rehabilitation of the building. Uh, we've worked with our architect and the project proponent, and at this time, the only areas of the building that would be modified are the first level to the basement and the rear portion of the building. That would allow us to create two, uh, uh, three duplex or bi-level style units and the first and basement levels. Uh, I do have Eric Zacherson who can answer questions about the egress, the windows, et cetera, and to confirm that those are all in compliance uh, with the building code. What that does, Mr. Chairman, does allow us uh, to work within this building uh, and not have to relocate or um, terminate any tenancies for the upper levels, that would be levels uh, two, three, and four, uh, which are presently occupied by tenants. So we're, we're happy to continue uh, a dialogue working with them. However, this uh, would allow us to simply make, begin the upgrades to the building, start at the lower level, uh, and then eventually we will get to uh, uh, renovations of the upper units as well. Um, but, but certainly there's no immediate need to uh, change anything with respect to those tenants. I know that has been a significant issue and I'm sure you'll hear some of the opposition that is raised. And I know my client uh, understanding the importance of, of trying to work with these current tenants uh, was sensitive to that, and certainly we're uh, we're doing everything we can to not have to uh, displace while we still take this chance to in, you know improve the property uh, as well as um, uh, you know create uh, you know condition that is probably more safe and more habitable. The unit sizes, Mr. Chairman, uh, the lower levels one and two would be uh, 850 and 950 uh, square feet respectively. Those are both uh, two bedroom units. The third unit, uh, which is existing, uh, would be about 1,150 square feet. That is a three bedroom, uh, 1,180 for the fourth, 1,180 for the fifth. And again, those are both three bedrooms. And then the sixth unit, which we located to the rear, uh, which involves the um, uh, sort of the reprogramming of the non-functional garage is about 800 square feet. And that is uh, that would be considered two bedrooms. As I said, from a zoning standpoint, Article 53 has this as a multifamily residential building. Uh, we uh, would comply. Uh, any change in use would not require any zoning relief to go from four to six units. We do require relief for the additional lot area. Uh, we have a pre-existing condition that is already um, uh, non-conforming. Uh, so any increase in number of units would require relief for the additional uh, uh, lot area for dwelling unit. We'd be also increasing the FAR to the extent that we'd be adding habitable space in both the lower level uh, as well as the rear where that, uh, where that garage will be reprogrammed. So we would require relief for the additional FAR that we're proposing. There were uh, previous violations that were cited for height, et cetera, and rooftop restrictions. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the updated plans uh, reflect that we are not making any modification of the roof of this building, so we are not increasing the height. We're not even proposing a roof deck. Um, there is already an existing headhouse that services the roof for maintenance purposes. Uh, with respect to the last and not least, with respect to parking, uh, this, again, being a pre-existing four-unit dwelling uh, is already non-conforming with respect to the parking. The only parking uh, that would be required with the two additional spaces uh, that the zoning code uh, indicates would be required for additional dwelling units. I'm happy to answer any questions of the board. Okay, so you've gone from eight to six. You've eliminated the fifth-story addition and eliminated the roof deck. Um, 
Has that been, has the community been notified about those changes? That, that is correct. So we did indicate to the community through the last advisory meeting that we would be reducing this down and not including the uh, upper level. Uh, more importantly, uh, as you can see from this profile view here, this rear portion of the building was actually a full addition up to, up to the fourth level that has also been modified and pulled back as well. Okay. So uh, okay. So and there's a uh, there's a there's a deck on a proposed deck on top of the uh, the addition, right? That is correct. Uh, for all intents and purposes, Mr. Chairman, the building uh, exterior remains the same. This is uh, essentially interior reprogramming, uh, yeah, upgrade yeah. to life safety to the extent that, that there's any uh, okay. change. To the and, and, the, and the basement units are part of, are of uh, uh, are part of duplexes, right? Uh, yeah. Floor, ground floor and basement. That's correct. They were curved into the first level, so you, at your main level is on level one, and that would be additional living space in the lower level. And again, Mr. Zacherson is present to explain uh, code compliance with respect to egress and windows. Okay, so I'd like to hear the, our usual uh, raft of questions about basement, um, uh, floor to ceiling, floor to grade, uh, what, what is programmed in the basement, uh, and what is on the first floor. So if, if he could uh, go through that, that would be helpful. Sure. Eric, if you could just clarify for the chairman uh, those specific points, uh, that would be helpful. I do see Eric Zapperson on here, so I just don't. Sorry. There he is. Uh, muted myself. Um, sorry. The, um, the plan is that unit one and two, which are in the first floor and basement of the existing building, um, would be uh, living in kitchen on the first floor with uh, bedrooms and in the uh, basement, which I believe is uh, five feet below grade. And when all is said and done, would have a uh, seven foot, 10 inch ceiling. Um, the unit six, which replaces the uh, workshop garage as a rear building. Um, when all when all is said and done, does that mean that the floor has to be excavated? Yeah, I mean, that, we believe the floor will have to be excavated. Um, and is, is and is the five foot to grade the current condition or after excavation? That, that is the current condition. So if it has to be excavated, what will be the finished floor to grade? Uh, I believe it'll be five foot ten. Okay. And that's and the and it's a relatively level uh, plot, so it's five foot ten all the way around. Correct. Okay. And the so and most the, of the built so most of the spaces in the basement would be submerged. That's correct. With all egress windows all around that are five feet tall. Correct. Uh, yes, correct. Well, more than five feet tall. Yeah. We five feet will get won't get you to grade. No, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Keep going. And the the rear unit, which is taking the place of the workshops, storage, uh, former garage, would have uh, the living kitchen in the in the basement portion with the bedrooms on the uh, first floor. And all the dimensions in that space are the same as the, the large yes. front yep. building. Okay, that's correct. So, so talk to us about egress from the from the basement. So, uh, each of the uh, each of the units has internal staircase leading up to the first floor, uh, and from that, the the rear unit exits directly onto the street. The other two exit into the uh, main corridor, which exits straight onto Grove Street. Right, but besides that, uh, um, so what about a second means of egress? Uh, e each of these units does not have a, a second means of egress. The building, first and second floor, would be fully protected with sprinkler systems as required as a, of a level two renovation. Ms. Ms. Barraza, what do you think of these drawings and what do you think of these uh, this basement proposals? I mean, I um, so. My opinion is that I don't have a problem with um, adding a unit to, you know, replacing the garage, the unit, the footprint was already existing. I have a problem with having bedroom units submerged in the basement. 
I thought the bedroom units are on the ground floor. Um, so, the floor? Yeah. In the front, what about it? What about the rear addition or the rear reprogramming that Ms. Braz is talking about? Well, Where the, are the, basement, the basement has bedroom units uh, on unit one and unit two. There's bedrooms in the basement. Okay. I mean, I, I, I we, 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 we have never approved uh, 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 bedrooms in a uh, below grade uh, basement, and this one is so far below grade, we often haven't approved any living space of, of any kind, um, other than maybe a playroom or utilities. Um, uh, but th this is a living room and, and kitchen, as, as I understand it. I believe, Mr. Chairman, the, 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 they're somewhat interchangeable. I, I think we can accomplish uh, living space on the main level and other non-bedroom space at the lower level. Um, it's I, I just, I'm very, I'm, I, just personally speaking, I'm very uncomfortable with the lack of a second means of egress. But, um, anyway, any, uh, any other comments, Ms. Barraza? No, that's, that's the, my only concern. I mean, it is a fully sprinklered building, um, yeah. and it's not that much in terms of density. But I think the main concern is to not have bedrooms in the basement. Any questions from the board? Uh, is there anyone who wants to speak on behalf of the applicant? Oh, oh uh, uh, Mr. Hampton, did you have any comments from the BPDA? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. As you saw in our recommendation, um, we based our recommendation for denial, and that was not seeing the new plans. Uh, we were under the assumption still. I think our recommendation was made back in April. Um, so it was on the proposal for eight units and a fifth floor addition. We didn't get to review uh, the changes uh, to this, so I can't you know, tell one way or the other uh, how or even if our recommendation would have changed. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of the applicant? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Lina Tramelli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on the record in opposition for this proposal. At this moment, this proposal didn't receive enough support from the abutters. Uh, there's still many concerns regarding the number of units, uh, as well the lack of parking, the height of the building, and the density. And uh, we didn't have any notification as well about the reduction, the, the eviction. Uh, there was a main concern, but we didn't know by the applicant that they were going to put um, this residence in another location. Thank you. Um, uh, can, I follow, can I follow up with a question? Uh, where, when, you, when you developed the position of opposition, was that based on it being eight units or six units? It was based on being six units. That was okay. the last presented at the Abares meeting that we had on a... Okay, because no, the reason I'm asking is that the issue of height apparently is, is no longer no longer an issue because they're not yeah, changing. Yeah, removed the fifth floor and they said uh, that they were going to remove as well the roof deck. Yeah, we did. Okay, so, all right. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Chair, Secretary here, we have numerous letters of opposition. And we also have um, Council, Councilwoman Lydia Edwards on the line. Can you hear us? I think she just spoke. I just, can you hear oh. us, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah, a little low. Okay, there you go. Yep. Okay. Um, so I, I just want to go on record again, um, though, the project for a couple reasons. One, there's a concern about displacement. I do recognize this developer said that they're in the middle of having that conversation. I think that conversation should be settled before this board moves or supports um, in any way, shape, or form this project. I also understand um, that there's uh, attempts to still uh, negotiate on the design and uh, as the new design has just come up for many people in terms of the height, I think it would be worthy of giving additional time at least for the tenants and for the direct abutters to see if they can come to an agreement with the owner. I'm very concerned about displacement as you know and I, we, I cannot support this until I see that there's a, there's a good faith effort to protect the tenants. Uh, and to make sure that they are they're settled in this home. I'd also like to note, I, I, I'm not sure if this is becoming condos or not, but if it is that they're, um, normally if this was just one more uh, story higher for the poor family, there'd be the condo conversion laws that we're protecting. 
the tenants as well. And there's also TAP in Boston, the new condo uh, permitting process, which uh, I would encourage the, uh, the developer to go through as well if we are, if these are going to be condos. So for now, I oppose it. I do hope that we can get to a negotiated agreement with the tenants and to protect them. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can I respond briefly? Briefly. Yeah, and I, with all due respect to the councillor, I, I believe what we're doing in response to concerns that we heard, although they're not necessarily specific zoning code issues, uh, the reprogram and the redesign of, of what we've you know, presented here to the board has taken specifically into consideration the existing tenants in the building. The tenants have uh, worked through certain advocacy groups to oppose this project when it was a complete rehab with an addition. We've modified this project substantially to focus the work on the unoccupied portion of the building, and we do nothing and propose nothing at this time with respect to the upper level units, which are occupied by the tenants. Okay, uh, the uh, tenants as well. Mr. Mr. Lenz, I understand that, that your, that your uh, proposal has changed. I understand that some of the opposition was based on an earlier version, but I would rather hear from the tenants themselves uh, than you about um, sure. you know what what their if, if their position has changed then we should hear from them. I, I highly doubt it, but go ahead. Sure. Okay, so we have uh, raised hand, Gabriel. Uh, Mr. Oh, Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty, Councilor Devon Reckett in opposition, echoing sentiments of Councilor Edwards. Okay. All right, and we'll start with the raised hands again. If anyone's on the call and is looking to give um, testimony, please raise your hand. Gabriella, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Um, hi, my name is Gabriella. I'm here translating for Melvin Acevedo. Yes, Melvin Acevedo. Who lives on the? Uh, um, apartment three. Uh, apartment three. And Melvin wrote um, that I am a father and my daughter goes to school across the street. We are in opposition for, we are in opposition and against the 168 goal um, conversion that will convert our poor family, not to the affordable building, to what we thought was a eight unit luxury rental building. We were never told about and never communicated about these project changes we found out right now when they were announced we were never approached with any multi-year negotiation to keep us house it's pretty clear that any work like this and any redevelopment for luxury units is going to displace right and like i said there isn't going to be if they really say that there isn't going to be displacement that they need to sit down with us and negotiate this on record. The Neighborhood Association is on record against this and also were never told about these changes. And if they want approval, they should come back to the Neighborhood Association to make sure they have votes in favor before this approval and make sure that they talk to us, right? And we have on record over 690, right, electronic oppositional comments and over 100 physical signatures. Thank right. you. Against. So I just want to make sure we get to everyone. Um, thanks. Thank you, Okay, appreciate it. Francis. Um, sorry, Francis, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, uh, my name is Francis Amador. I live in 168 Bob Street, apartment four. And I'm also here to say that we never heard about these changes. Uh, we have seen the agenda on the CBA and it's still with the same project as last month. Um, we have never heard from uh, the landlord's office uh, directly of any changes and make it clear that uh, this proposal would not displace us. They have not communicated to us in faith, in a good faith. They have not negotiated with us in a good faith and we know that this will end up in a displacement as well. Oh, with this or without. Okay, thank you, Francis. I also have Paula Keys. Um, Peaks, I'm sorry, who's looking to speak. Paula, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, Paula. Okay. That's all I have for raised hands. Okay. I, I mean, I think, I think we have heard uh, enough. I think there's, uh, 
uh, at a minimum, a lack of communication and at, um, uh, and a maximum, um, some unresolved pro uh, problems. Can I, can I have a motion, please? Motion to deny without prejudice. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. So a denial without prejudice allows the uh, applicant to take one more shot at trying to sort some of these things out as Councillor Edwards suggested. Uh, but uh, that, uh, that's, that's the um, uh, verdict of the board. Thank you. Following the next two cases, calling BOA 121-1917-69 Montgomery Street. There's a companion case of building code BOA 121-1900-69 Montgomery Street. This is the change of lock from 2FI plus larger to a three family. Violation <laughs> article 64.9.4, townhouse row extensions into the rear balcony additions. Article 32, section 32-4, this is in the G card. Article 64, section 34, proposed roof deck, restricted roof structure. Article 64, section nine, usable open space is insufficient. This is the building code. The ninth edition CMR 780, 1011 stairways, 1011.11.12.2, .1 .1 .2 .2, roof access to a penthouse. Ninth edition 780 CMR 1021, egress balconies. Fire escape down to a garage roof is eliminate, eliminated instead of a ladder proposed. Name and address for the record, please. Mr. Uh, <coughs> Chair, members of the board, John Moran, Alpine Advisory Services, with the mailing address of 130 Beach Road. Uh, Mr. Chair, at this matter was be originally before the board okay uh, hang on we want to do you you've got a, a building code violation as well as a zoning violation correct so, correct so and let's deal with the building code first if we could go to uh a5 on the plans it would be helpful uh we are seeking first uh, a variance to install a hatch rather than a the required headhouse uh, the hatch in the Landmarks District has been an acceptable compliance alternative and approved by the board in numerous occasions, and we're seeking a variance in this matter to install the, the usual hatch. Okay. Uh, in reference to the alteration to the existing staircase fiber escape, uh, the occupancy load of the building is being reduced to three units it will be fully sprinkled uh, and the alteration that we are seeking is a existing staircase that runs from the parlor level at the rear onto an existing garage uh, then the egress uh, would be across uh, existing is across a flammable roof back to the building and then down a ladder on the side as shown. What we are proposing is we propose to demolish the garage and remove that section of the stairway and then to at the parlor level to extend the firewalk over to the rear of the addition uh, and extend a ladder down to the existing ladder. The international existing building code uh, permits alterations to non-compliant systems, and this fire escape system is non-compliant, provided the changes do not make it more non-compliant. Uh, and we suggest that uh, the alteration makes it uh, more compliant rather than non-compliant by yeah. one All right. we, Okay. We Ms. 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 Barraza, obviously the uh, the request uh, for the hatch instead of the penthouse is uh, the welcome request. What's your feeling about the uh, this egress ladder uh, stairwell? Um, I would I would agree, but I would also like to put a proviso that ISD fire prevention has a review as well. Okay, but you're but you're prepared to suggest that that this is acceptable? Yes. Okay, so then why don't, so then before we get on to the zoning, can you please make a motion about uh, both yes. the building code relief uh, questions? Okay, so Mr. Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion for relief for the use of a hatch versus a penthouse. And I would also like to provide a relief to use a vertical ladder for egress with 
um, ISD Fire Prevention Review. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, so uh, we're, you're all set on the building code uh, questions. Now let's go to the heart of the matter. The, uh, on the G-Card, uh, we have complied the, with the requirements for the issuance of a conditional use permit for a G-Card. Water and Sewer has issued, and we have filed the stamped approved plans in their compliance letter, and we have also filed the Hold Harmless letter with the Groundwater Trust and request a G-Card permit. Okay, do we, uh, Mr. Fortune, do we have the letter? Yes, we do. Okay, can I vote? Can, can you please make a motion on that? Motion to approve the GCOT. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All Aye. opposed? Okay, so those are the two preliminaries. Now let's get to the main ballot. We are seeking a conditional use permit uh, for, the, for decks in the rear. Again, if we can reference A5, it would be helpful. The only deck that projects off the rear of the addition into the rear yard is at the uh, basement level, which is not the first story and uh, does not require a conditional use permit. The other proposed decks that do project above the first story are projecting into the side yard. They project six feet into the side yard uh, and the decks are six by seven feet. Uh, and they are cantilevered. Those are shown on the parlor level and the upper level of the addition. Uh, the roof deck is cited because it exceeds the permitted size by 8.75 square feet. Uh, and we, re we request relief to maintain the roof deck uh, as designed. The open space, uh, if the board approves the uh, proposed decks. The open space requirements are fulfilled of 200 square feet per dwelling unit. There are three dwelling units. Uh, there would be adequate open space with the decks approved. Okay, um, the, the proposed roof deck, uh, which is uh, now going to be accessed by hatch, is that for the uh, uh, upper use of the upper unit only? Correct. Okay, and you said you're 8.75 square feet over the... Uh, Permitted 330 square feet. And so you have like 341? No, we have 338.75 square feet. And 330 is what's permitted? Yes. Uh, just out of curiosity, why didn't you just do 330 and not have to get a variance on that? Well, we went back a number of times with the plan examiner on other matters, and he was correcting it. We are prepared to make it 330, uh, but we did not. We had gone back three times on other matters, and time trying to expedite matters, we uh, did not want to go back a fourth time <laughs> to modify the roof deck. All right. It just seems uh, it would have made your life and our life considerably easier uh, had you done that, but. Um, all right, now, Ms. Barraza, how are the plans? The plans are adequate. I, since we're on this drawing, I just would like to ask, um, what is the head clearance uh, on the ground floor underneath the... the nine the nine feet. Okay, perfect, great. Any questions from the board? Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of the applicant? Good afternoon, Chairman, members of the board, Jack Duggan, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Just like to go on record of support. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councilor Flynn's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support based on feedback from neighbors and the Ellis Neighborhood Association who inform us that they are not opposed to the project. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I have no raised hands. I can move. Okay, then I will entertain a motion. If somebody wants to deal with the size of the roof deck, that's fine. If not, I'll go right ahead. Mr. Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. Yeah, I don't think there's any need for a design review. Second. Second, Joe. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 109 14 Schuyler Street. This is seeking to raise the existing structure and erect a four unit residential dwelling with seven parking spaces. Violation of Article 50, Section 29. The height requirement is excessive. Article 50, Section 44.2, front yard model alignment. Article 50, Section 28, a multifamily dwelling unit, nine units building is forbidden. Article 50, Section 29, the lot area for additional dwelling units is sufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the lot width is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the lot frontage is insufficient. And Article 50, Section 29, the floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 50, Section 29, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 50, Section 29, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago, but Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street here on behalf of the applicant. And I also have Eric Zacherson from Context, who's the architect on the project you see before you at 14 Schuyler. Um, I, I believe, Mr. Secretary, you did read uh, the, the modified plans, which is a four unit building with seven parking spaces. Although I, I, there were another, it was a violation still under the nine. So I'm just going to read it to the record. This project has been modified from originally a nine unit project with nine parking spaces. Um, it is now four units with seven parking spaces. And in making those modifications, we actually removed the roof deck on the building, reduced the unit count, but removed a violation. Our rare setback has now been removed as a violation. Um, as well as lowering a number of the violations as well, which I'll get into. I just wanted to be sure that that violation for the record was... Um, was uh, Okay, I, so th this is the second time today I, uh, that um, something is advertised and uh, uh, different uh, on the agenda than actually what's being proposed. Um, what's the reason for that? Is that a question to me, Mr. Ehrlich? Or well, I start with you. Okay, so we, we, we modified, obviously we deferred, made changes accordingly, submitted the plans that were then reviewed and approved. So I, I don't, you know, I, I know that sometimes happens in terms of the agenda that goes out. I don't know why that happens. But I mean, it, it's a, it is a significantly different project to uh, uh, four units versus nine units. Uh, Ms. 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 Barraza, are the drawings that you reviewed reflect that it's for a four unit dwelling? Yes, yeah, so I'm looking at um, the drawings now, and it does have seven parking spaces, so that is correct. And I'm seeing four units, so I do correct. have those updated plans. Okay. Uh, and, and just so you know, Mr. Chairman, we, the, the community is aware of this. We met with them multiple times. Okay, okay. And then we have a BPDA recommendation that talks about you know not too much density and i'm assuming once again that that's based on a previous yeah it seems yeah. like the, yeah it was you know, it seems like the plan review just reviewed the drawings yesterday so i did okay. receive them. all right okay well uh there's a certain amount of confusion but we'll just keep uh, keep going forward into the fog uh mr greg please please describe the uh, uh the current proposal of four units and seven parking spaces so the new proposal, as was mentioned, is four units, seven associated parking spaces in the back entered through a curb cut um, shown on the, the uh, design you're looking at now. Um, the Just to go over the floor plan, uh, unit one is an accessible unit, uh, accessible through a side entrance side ramp uh, on the right side of the building. That is a two bedroom, two bath, uh, 1,155 square foot unit. Um, again, the seven parking spaces that you can see here are in the back. Those are all full size spaces. So eight and a half by 20 with a uh, 20 foot uh, turning radius area um, in the back, back out clearance area uh, for the spaces as well. We go up to the second floor. There are now two units on that floor. Those are both three bedroom, two bath units at uh, 1,225 square feet and 1,205 square feet. Those both have uh, both rear and front decks. The front decks were added as part of the community process because they sort of match the design in that particular street uh, up and down that area. And then we go up to the unit four, which is a three bedroom, two bath that also has an office 
uh, in a deck as well, and that is an 1,800 square foot unit. The violations, as I mentioned, we removed um, the uh, rare setback violation. So we now have uh, a rare setback of 33 feet, eight inches um, to the decks and 41 feet, eight inches to the face of the building. Um, the use, this is a 3F district. Um, it's a 3F 5,000 square foot district. So um, we are proposing four units. So we do still have a use violation. Our lot size, just to mention, is 7,077 square feet. Um, we uh, do have a lot width violation and frontage slightly under its pre-existing, but we're at 47 feet 76 and 50 is required. Um, our FAR, again, 0.8 is what's allowed for this area. We're at 0.91. Our front yard um, is uh, 15 and so to be exactly modal we would have to be at 17 um, although it varies on the street and our open space uh, 650 square feet per dwelling unit would be required we're roughly at 500. okay um can we see a, a plot plan that shows the, how the parking works if we go up to that that you can step right sorry uh, that that shows it as well correct so there's a 11 foot uh, dry, uh, curb cut and driveway on the left hand side mr chair that goes back to the spaces and then there's green space beyond those spaces as well 15 feet eight inches of actual green space and then the paved area for the uh for the park and the i i just can't read the the, the small numbers what's the size of the parking spaces so they're full size to all of them so uh, eight and a half by 20. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Uh, how are the, uh, the drawings now that we have cl cleared up uh, confusion? Mr. Chair, the plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? How, how long is the width of the building? So our, from the front all the way to the rear. I know we have Eric on. You might be able to answer that, Eric Zacherson. Uh, yeah, one second. Um, uh, the building is on the left side, uh, 97 feet long, um, from the from the back deck to the front corner. Um, if you were to take the exterior wall on the second floor, which is kind of the worst case scenario, you would have a building that's 92 feet eight inches. Okay. And typically, in the context, how long are the buildings around? next to it. Probably 60 um, feet, no? I'm looking at Google. Possibly, I know we've got an empty lot on one side, so it's yep. a little tough, but yeah, probably. Okay. 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 Is, that, is, that, is that answer your questions? Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there anyone here to speak on behalf of the uh, applicant? Good afternoon, Chairman and members of the board. This is Jason Gant from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I'd like to go on record in support of this project. They have been working tirelessly with the Project Right Neighborhood Association to make sure they, one, take any concerns or questions into account and reach back out to the neighbors. I just want to make sure that they continue working with Project Right and make sure that the property is maintained. Mr. Chair, we have a few uh, we'll raised hand if we don't have any uh, letters. Is the secretary, you're all set? Yep, I'm okay. good. All right, Mike, you've been unmuted. Um, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, my name is Michael Coulson from Project Right, 320, letter A, Blue Avenue. I'm spe uh, speaking to, uh, uh, in terms of a non-opposition submission. I, I want to acknowledge that the developer has met several times with neighbors and address uh, many of their concerns from going from nine units to four units. Um, we are looking forward to continuing our work as they, as they move forward. Thank you, Mike. And, uh, Mr. Thank you. Chair, I have no additional raised hands at the moment. Okay, can I have a motion, please? Approval. Like 
I'm sorry, Joe, you broke up a little bit. That approval was a sign of you? Yes. Okay. Yep. Is there a second? Second. I second. All those in favor. <laughs> All those in favor, I didn't hear very many anybody. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, members of the board. Calling the next case, calling BLA 1080192, 10 Woodhaven Street. This is a erected two family dwelling, proposed two off street parking. The violations, Article 60, Section 8, <coughs> the use is forbidden in the residential subdistrict. Article 60, Section 40, off street parking loading requirement. Article 60, Section 9, insufficient rear yard setback. Article 60, Section 9, insufficient lot frontage width. Article 60, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 60, Section 9, the number of allowed stories has been exceeded. Article 60, Section 9, insufficient front yard setback, and Article 60, Section 9, insufficient usable open space per unit. Name and address for the record, please. They're on. Let me just know that we're having issues with the English group Valentine. Okay, Valentine Watson, you, are you there? Yes. Okay, um, go ahead. Can you state your name and address for the record? It's Valentine Watson. I'm actually the the, the owner is actually on an, on another site on 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 the Zoom also. But um, my name is Valentine Watson. I'm the actual the contractor. Uh, my address is Seven Oakwood Street in Dorchester. Um, hey, you want to tell us about, about the project? Yeah, we actually were we were before the board before, and we had actually addressed most of the concern that you guys had. We were supposed to have um, submitted just the elevation and required the architect, the name of the architect. So we had addressed the frontage, the, the parking space, and I think we, there's another drawing that we, you, we have actually submitted. I'm not sure you have an update of our drawings. Uh, let, let's see, okay. Yeah, no, I, I recall that uh, the issue was that there was some information that was lacking. Yes. Yeah. Is that the, uh, is that the only uh, um, uh, plan view that we have? Oh, there we go. Yes. Okay. Ms. Barraza, uh, have you reviewed these documents? I have, and um, there's also a plot plan. So I have been able to review the plot plan. You're proposing four parking spaces, and I would imagine the whole rear is asphalt? Yes. Okay. Okay, so there's I don't have any further questions. There's a driveway on the left, which leads to four, four diagonal four, spaces. Four, yeah, four parking spots. Yeah, okay. Okay, how's the, uh, Ms. Barraza, what do you think? Uh, can you bring that plot plan back up? Yeah, I mean, I, the, the drawings are adequate. You know, my, my concern is very similar to, I have concerns when asphalt takes over open space. And, um, you know, it's a pretty modest construction. You know, it's pretty yeah. sh straightforward. I just would like for the applicant to consider open green space, you know, perhaps through uh, the surface of the material. You know, it doesn't have to be asphalt. But yes, we can. Tavers of sort. Yeah. The owner actually owns the, the house next door, so there wouldn't be an adjoining. The parking space around the back is going to be open to his yard, so and it's more green space around it. Well, it's so also the, the, the time, and it and it seems to me if all four cars are parked there, I don't see how the back three could get around the first one. It, it seems like it's a problem of maneuverability. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, you know, perhaps if, if we approve this, well, they can be designed with you to re reconfigure the uh, the parking uh, for both Ms. Barraza's concern as well as maneuverability. Okay. Yes, All right. Uh, any questions from the board? Um, uh, Mr. Fortune, did Mr. D'Amico weigh in on this with respect to parking? He did not. Okay. All right. Uh, is anyone here to speak on behalf of the applicant? Hi, uh, yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dante Peoples here at the Manitoba Neighborhood Services. Um, at this time, we'd like to 
go on record in opposition of this proposal, um, mostly doing, dealing with um, the lack of communication um, with the two civic groups in the area, which would be the uh, Woodhaven, Colbert, Regis Neighborhood Association, as well as the Greater Manhattan Neighborhood Town Council. Um, I believe the last time the applicant was in contact um, and had spoken with the uh, association was November 2020. Um, you know, the mayor's office would, uh, again, like to go on uh, a record opposition, but would, you know, like to have the um, applicant come to the Woodhaven um, Association community meet monthly meeting, which is October 4th. Um, they have been invited, um, and, you know, we would like to, you know, see the problem, the applicant just work with the community and come to that meeting and see what comes about from there. But at this time, again, we would like to go on record in the opposition. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to confirm what Mr. People said. Uh, the letter we do have is from November 2020 from the Greater Mattapan uh, Civic Association. So he is correct when he regards to that. That's uh, almost 11 months now. Yeah. Yeah, we does were actually in a, Does this state why there's opposition? Well, the opposition was based on lack of community input. Just communication? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, anybody else? Any other raised hands? Do you have a raised hand? Mike, are you looking to weigh in on this? Okay. I think Mike's all set. Um, no other raised hands at the moment. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, um, uh, if, the, if the opposition is based on communication problems uh, as opposed to the merits of the project, and if there are still some items that probably need to be redesigned, I think either a deferral or a denial without prejudice would be appropriate so that they can kind of check all the boxes and come back with a, uh, a fully gutted project. So I would entertain a motion. I would like to make a motion for denial without prejudice. So is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye opposed. Uh, uh, Ms. Barraza opposes, and uh, and again for the applicant, the basis for the denial without prejudice is not on necessarily on the merits of the project, but on the lack of communication, and also uh, maybe you can use that time uh, to connect with the neighborhood associations and to reconfigure the uh, the parking oh. for more green space and maneuverability. So, oh, okay, we'll do that. Um, Unfortunately, we, we did go to some of the meetings. Um, they didn't actually invite us. I think, Mr. I think we're, we're, we're in a, a loss because we seem to be waiting for it for, for you guys to, to, to for right, meet, well, the well, DOA meetings that we I, keep on. I, I would suggest you contact the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services and work that out with them, okay? All right, we'll do that then. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling DOA 1215905, 34, 34 High Street. This is to construct a new two-story addition onto an existing dwelling. Addition will feature a two-level Oriel window. There'll be a new deck built on the rear, rear yard, which will cover existing parking spaces. Violation of Article 62, Section 29, off-street parking is insufficient. Article 62, Section 8, the rear yard is insufficient. And Article 62, Section 8, the usable open space is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Anthony McGinnis, 96 Warren Street, Charlestown, Mass. Um, I represent Kendall and Jefferson Miller, the owners at 34 High Street in Charlestown. Um, this is a, a proposal to add a two-story addition to the rear of the um, ap applicant's home. Um, it will also have a rear deck coming off of the addition, which will cover the existing parking spots. Uh, this is a Kind of a historic um, facade to this building. It's a two-story building in Charlestown where the surrounding um, buildings are all three or four stories. The idea here was to preserve and, and maximize the space on the on the underused lot. Um, so the all the um, changes to the plan will be consistent with the historic uh, nature and character of the property. Um, the uh, rear of the yard you will see be replaced with the addition. Uh, the deck will go over the existing parking. Uh, the violations for, for uh, rear yard setback and open space use, um, we are not, um, we do not have, a, we're not exceeding the FAR, we're not exceeding any height restrictions. Um, and um, 
as you can see on the plan, uh, the parking will be existing and the curb cut is existing there. So the, uh, the, the applicant is a, is a family. They've lived there for a number of years. The family has grown. They have additional children now. They attend Boston Public School. The idea is to increase the square footage of the property so they can remain in Boston in the public school system. Um, and I can answer any questions you'd like. I also have Rachel Kraft, who is one of the architects on the project here as well. Okay. Um, this, uh, is a, this one is one of the cases that came before the subcommittee. That's and, correct. And this was the one when, when Mr. Fortune read the recommendations, this was the one that was deferred to the full board just because it seemed a little bit more complex than the usual de minimis projects that we consider at the subcommittee. Um, Mr. Robinson was the architect at the subcommittee and raised uh, some questions. Uh, Ms. Barraza, I don't know if you've had a chance uh, to look it over. Um, I'm trying to remember some of the things that Mr. Robinson raised. I don't know, Mr. Fortune, if you remember, uh, but uh, there was, I think, a lot. Of, there was concern about lot coverage, um, and uh, I think that was primarily the main concern because of the rear addition. Um, but, yeah, I, I think you're 100 percent right. But uh, also, Mr. D'Amico had weighed in on this one as well, and I could put that into the record so the other board members can hear that. Okay, please do. Yeah, regarding 34 High Street, uh, both spaces are too small and do not meet the BTD standards, and the curb cut does not align with the parked vehicles. Okay, uh, Ms. Barras, have you, have you had a chance to look this one over? Yeah, so uh, Mr. Chair, I reviewed the drawings, and my concern really was that you're replacing open space again with a, a unit uh, with expanded floor plan. So. I, I have, that's really my main concern. You know, if you're a grown family, where do they play? You know, where do the kids play? Sure, so um, and taking that into consideration, that is one of the reasons that they um, added the rear deck because um, as, as I said, we're not, we're not going over the FAR and without the rear deck, we wouldn't even go over the uh, rear yard setback. So it's just that would be the usable open space. And that's why the deck was added. Um, in addition, in Charlestown, um, children often play in the numerous different parks in the area. Um, it's common to have um, the parents take the children to the parks. The monument is right, right nearby, uh, Harvard Park, and there's um, also um, numerous other parks around uh, Charlestown. So the idea is to give the space interior, would add an additional bedroom for one of the children, um, who currently all are in the same bedroom, I believe. and. Um, so the, the outdoor space would be uh, utilized by the deck. Currently, how many uh, cars are parked? There are currently two cars parked there. There's no change to the parking whatsoever. That was um, pre-existing. Um, the, the code in Charlestown changed um, a couple of years ago regarding uh, new parking for residential projects. It's not required any longer. Um, so this was just pre-existing um, with the property. And so, then, the, so the issues that Mr. D'Amico raising have to do with the pre-existing condition, not a new design? Correct. That's correct. Uh, and the idea with the deck was also to, to cover those spots, just to make might be better for neighbors to look down on a deck rather than two cars. So what's your existing gross per feet and what's your proposed? So the existing is um, 1491 was the existing gross square feet. Um, the proposed is 2566. The allowed here would be, it's a FAR of two, the allowed would be 2,700 square feet, so we're under the allowed. Okay. Good. Uh, any questions from the board? Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of the applicant? Uh, yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is Caitlin Stapleton with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, the Mayor's Office would like to go on record in support of this proposal. Um, and a butters meeting was held on July 1st by our office where there were no concerns shown by butters. Um, we also received three letters of support for the proposal. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Secretary here, we do have letters of support. We have one letter of opposition, and that opposition is the deck. Mr. Chair, I have no raised hands. Okay, can I have a motion, please? Mr. Chair, I'd like to put a motion forward of approval with BPDA design review and BTD review to look at the parking. Second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, the motion carries. Thank you. 
Mr. Chair, calling the last case for reconsideration, calling case BOA 990 440 195 Dudley Street. Sorry. Can't find the violation page. This was a change of order to add a recreational cannabis dispensary to an existing occupancy. The violation was Article 50, Section 10, a cannabis establishment is conditional use. In Article 50, Section 10, the cannabis establishment is located less than 2,640 feet away from another. One is forbidden. Note this is proposed cannabis use is located less than 2,640 2640 feet from the existing cannabis establishment. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Brian Keith, 105 Mount Pleasant Ave, Roxbury. Uh, Mr. Keith, uh, I would, um, oh, let's start, let's start. Hold on, Mr. Mr. Chair, I think we might have lost Ms. Barraza. Oh. Well, while we're waiting for her, there's actually an updated yeah. presentation that I sent, uh, um, Rakia. No, uh, we're not yeah. interested in an updated presentation. Okay. Right here. Okay, you're there. Very good. Okay. So, explain Can to us. Can you hear me? Explain to us why we should uh, reconsider this matter. And I do not want another presentation. Um, to be fair and clear, previously we were not allowed to provide a presentation. Um, I was just asked questions. The other proponent for Nubian Square did provide 19 slides, which is the same number of slides that we have. Well, we, so that, but that being said, to answer your question, no, to answer Mr. your question. No, Mr. We, Keith, it has nothing to do with the other proponent. This has to do with why we should reconsider a, a, a proposal that you went through with this board and we acted on. That's Certainly, it. absolutely. Sure. Uh, our proposal was acted on without complete knowledge of the entire record. Um, there were nearly 500 letters of support submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals, which Ambassador Thomas and uh, ZBA Council Broom confirmed that were received by the Zoning Board, but they were never entered into the record. Additionally, including in that were letters of support from the Nubian Square Neighborhood Association, which is the closest and most impacted neighborhood association from our site. Letters of non-opposition from uh, the mayor's office, excuse me, the District 7 City Council's office, as well as Anissa, uh, City Council at Large, Asabi George. Uh, a letter of support from the, the entity that triggers the actual violation. So 100 Hampton Street, the entity that triggers the violation, they also provided us with a letter of support, which was not included in the record. Uh, at the hearing, uh, Chairperson Araju stated that she was concerned about the traffic. We provided two traffic studies that uh, said that we would uh, cause a de minimis impact on the area with regards to traffic. That was not part of the record. Uh, member Araza stated that she was calling the vote that she called due to the lack of support and she was not aware of the 500 letters of support compared to about 100 letters of opposition. That is why we're requesting, because the record was not complete and a decision was made based on an incomplete record. Okay. Um, Mr. Keith, I appreciate the fact that you felt like the decision was based on an incomplete record. Um, virtually every applicant that doesn't get a positive uh, outcome from us could make the same argument. I've been actually quite disturbed that in the last year there's been a, we, we used to almost never get uh, motions for reconsideration. Uh, it's, it, and it's become more prevalent because, uh, you know, attorneys can figure out a way to try to maneuver around the system if they get an outcome that they're not pleased with. And you may not like what we, what we came up with, you may not agree what we came up with, but the fact is that we went through a process that I think was, was relatively exhaustive and at the end of the day, we came up with a conclusion. So I am reluctant. Uh, but, uh, that, that, so uh, excuse me. Let me. I'm speaking. I let you speak. Um, so I am reluctant, in general, unless there is a severe breakdown of process on our end, which could happen. But I don't see that as having happened in this case. I am reluctant to get to consider matters for reconsideration. There are other methods. If you were denied. There are other methods you have to uh, to produce a a different proposal, qualitatively different proposal, with the proponents and come back to us. May I describe the breakdown? No, you already did. I asked you why it should be reconsidered, and you answered. I I, I really don't like actually that this is happening, 
and I would encourage every applicant that doesn't get a favorable outcome to think twice before they provide a request for reconsideration. Uh, that may be strong, but that's what that's. I think it's a. Uh, I, I think it's maneuvering around the intent and the process of this board. So I would entertain a motion at this point. Uh, Chair Ehrlich, if I may. No, uh, no, I. Uh, I I've asked Secretary, the, the, Mr. Early, if I may, the secretary of your board said that we had no letters of support. The the documents, the documents that that uh, Stephanie Haynes referred Mr. to, the, the, the letters of support were the violation, were so, the violation that triggered the, uh, the 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 situation that triggered the violation is still there, and that was what prompted us to take the vote that we did. So again. But Mr. Ehrlich, the discussion that was had had nothing to do with the violation that triggered. The, the violation that triggered is our distance of proximity to a cultivation facility. Can I ask the ambassador to cut you off, Mr. Key? The, we have, we've heard you, and um, we, we are now prepared to, uh, to take this under consideration. I'm looking for a motion. There's either a motion to reconsider or there's a motion to deny reconsideration. There is no other option. I would ask the, the uh, board member to make a motion. Motion to deny reconsideration. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All I opposed. Pardon me? I oppose. Okay. Ms. Barraza opposes. The motion carries. Thank you. That's um, that is uh, the um, uh, that's it for today, and uh, we will adjourn the session. Thank you all.